hello uh, this will be a pretty big tutorial video about making all kinds of particle effects using only this scope uh, I will try to cover all information needed so everyone can make their cool particle effects uh, at the end there will be an extra chapter about meshes and planes and some important settings so check out that too uh, so particles are good for a lot of things like creating a better chimney smoke effect uh, a lot of uh, different kinds of uh, fog effects uh, even light projection through a wall or opening or a window as you will see you can make uh, waterfall uh, or flame effects for uh, fire, uh, for a torch or dust or ash effects or <coughs> for example enchanted, enchanted armor and weapons like true flame or magic objects uh, in the world for your custom quest for example, or even adding uh, particles to an NPC like uh, the flame or storm atronach uh, in the original game. Also, particles are best for magic effect replacers, uh, though I will try to continue working on those after finally finishing this video. Uh, so there will be a lot of uh, tricks which aren't used in any vanilla effect. Uh, first parts of the tutorial won't be too entertaining but it will get more fun later on I hope. Uh, things may seem hard at first but with a little practicing if scope will be actually really easy to use and uh, it is actually the best program to create uh, effects for Morrowind and you can, once you get uh, friendly with Nifscope, you can create pretty nice things in like 5 minutes. Uh, in the description of the video you will find uh, time links uh, time links to the important parts, so you don't have to search for it. Uh, also I will upload uh, all the files that I have showed in the video, so you can download them and uh, open them in your Nifscope and try the same things that I did. Uh, for example, if you download the package, you will see some meshes, a lot of them, and all is important, all will work, and all will do different kinds of interesting things, which are presented in the video and there will be a lot of resource files which you can reuse uh, just by changing some properties and values and I have uploaded some random textures so if you want to make your own effects uh, you can uh, try out different textures on it. Uh, some are mine, some are uh, some I have made myself, some are from the vanilla game, some are from the symphony mod or the Midas mod from Oblivion, the rest I do not know, I have found them on the internet or some other place. And you will find uh, some accessories uh, for example this live mesh editing script extender Lua file <coughs> which will help you greatly to edit the effects it is made by greatness 7 and also made by greatness 7 is the this custom nifscope xml file which will make you see properties which are uh, 
normally unknown values or <coughs> you or the or would break the program uh, there will be two here <coughs> one of them maybe contains some uh, more properties um, so you can see them clearly but it somehow breaks the rendering inside NIFSCOPE but you wouldn't need it actually because you will only check the effects out in game the other that I use is also made by Greatness 7 it doesn't break the NIFSCOPE rendering window well I have learned NIFSCOPE mostly just by playing with it or experimenting but actually there is a really good uh, written guide which people should be aware of it is made by uh, originally made by the makers of the Russian symphony mod some years ago but lately the work is continued by EJ or Mr. Urchin and he is adding a lot of fresh stuff to it every day also creates uh, awesome videos so if something is not clear from this tutorial uh, you should definitely check these files as well I try to cover most of the important stuff but you will find a lot of new things in uh, these notes uh, to download it there is this notes for mod makers and there are the written guides and the video tour made by EJ and if you download it it's like this uh, it is a little hard to figure out uh, what is going on first but uh, and it is a little strange and it is Russian but you can easily right click and translate to English and it will be perfect to use uh, on the left side you can uh, check out different areas uh, for example there is a theoretical knowledge and practical uses and examples about basically everything this sup supported by engine is the most interesting part as as it mentions all the nodes that we will use in NIFSCOPE and what they do, how to create them uh, for example the particles which we will use this uh, node files mentions mostly all of these for example the gravity and uh, there are links for example how to create them in 3ds max or settings and uh, so you will find here everything needed so uh, it's really nice and there are the video files uh, in the tours and how to and he made a EJ made a lot of videos about all kinds of stuff for example the ray tracing or I will pick some interesting stuff like the how to create a path controller in 3ds max which is really useful as you can cannot make them these in NIFSCOPE but you can easily make them in 3ds max and in, in ex export them into NIFSCOPE so in, it's insane how many videos he made so people should be aware of this work so here are some original magic effects exported from the game and you can open them up in NIFSCOPE for example this is the illusion cast effect and if you open it you can preview it you can see the textures the game uses but only if you 
specified uh, Morrowind data files folder so this scope can use the same textures as the game. Uh, as you see, I use Nifscope version 2.0, but it really doesn't matter which version you use. I use this because it has a smoother user interface. Uh, but it really doesn't matter because Nifscope cannot show or render a lot of things properly, and it and a lot of things will appear completely different in Nifscope than in game especially with particles so for a long time I had to uh, whenever I change something in my effect I had to restart Morrowind every time and check uh, out how it actually looks in game because it showed completely different in <coughs> new scope luckily a user named Greatness7 made a wonderful tool to make things easier with it you can make changes in a NIF file and save it and the new version will show instantly in game so basically you won't even need to check NIF scope render window you will always check how it looks in game without restarting the game uh, this is only a this plugin is only a Morrowind script extender file if you have it you have to just put it in a folder, this is it, and in it you have to specify one uh, NIF location, it's in data files and uh, meshes, and this is what you have to change, and this, in this case this is only a casting effect uh, replacer mod, like uh, in my game data files uh, you see meshes arc m and there is this cast effect live cast so on you have to only specify the location of the NIF file you want to change Let's save it. Now as we specified this target location for the file that we, that we want to edit, we have to save this original magic effect to that location. Uh, this is livecast.nif.nif .nif. Uh, Replace it. In NIF scope, we will mostly use only this left side of the program. We won't use any special functions or any stuff, just edit the values here. When you open this roll down menu, you may think, What the hell is all this? How do I edit them? Uh, well, it looks this messy because this particle file was possibly exported from 3ds max and it was made in 3ds max and not in nifscope but actually nifscope is a perfect program to organize and edit completely uh, particle effects so you see this vanilla magic effect has five particles uh, you see uh, they are started from different points. Uh, in this tutorial we will use this basic file and we will create everything from this. It's like forming a clay. So first let's just erase all things that we don't need to simplify things. You can, con you can delete uh, these nodes which you don't need by control delete or block remove delete remove branch so just delete a lot of things here now you see it's only one particle that remained now that we only have one particle 
uh, let's look at the simplified uh, structure here. So in NIF, NIF scope, uh, the, there is a, this is like a tree structure or a children parent structure. You can expand everything and rearrange things like these two uh, nodes are making the particle and they are stored in this stored in this uh, zero ni node and uh, you can if you want you can make an extra containing folder for it uh, by clicking on this node and attach parent node and ni node again so as you see there are th three levels now so ni node is the most simple basic node it in itself does nothing only you can make a different uh, uh, tree structure with it uh, but you can give it properties like these are the basic properties like translation, rotation, scale so if you want to translate it a little you can translate it and rotate it and as you see I am editing the main node here and everything under that will be affected by this translation or scaling or whatever I set. Also you can give it controller for movement or other stuff. You can give it extra properties. You can see what nodes are its children. So you see now it has one children and it is this the node one. If we delete this the nodes the structure will be like this so one won't be under zero so let's uh, remake that now on the right side of every ni node or other nodes there is a value field where you can type whatever you want it, ju it is just good for giving names to nodes so you will know what uh, they do so when you open your file a week later you remember what what you while you made those nodes what they do so we can just call this main node effect effect test and uh, this node contains all our particle information so let's just name it particle now let's see what is inside this uh, particle node so the first important is the emitter which is the point from which the particles will be emitted from and this can be uh, a simple ni node so uh, like you see now this ni node is here and uh, if I change the coordinates uh, it will be emitted from there if you want to change its direction uh, like you, you see now the particles are uh, emitted to a different direct direction um, next to an emitter the particle needs uh, two things uh, particle data which is uh, here and the particle system controller which is here and uh, so actually this NIBS particle node is only a containing node and it's not the particle node itself it's so it's only an extra node which is good for this flag and based on this flag the game will understand what purpose does this particle serve how the game engine should treat this particle but we will talk about this later so about what 
flag number we should give. So it's another con uh, parent folder, and this is the actual uh, particle node. So let's give uh, all these the proper name so you know which is which. Let's name this uh, emi emitter. This is the game setting. Uh, these are extra properties, we will talk about this later. Uh, and this is the particle node, which contains a controller, controller plus. So this is the controller, this is the particle data. Also, it has other properties like the texture of a material. We will talk about those later. Properties. Let's look into this near rotating particles node. As you see, it has uh, the controller and the particles data, which are the most important. The controller has a lot of properties as you see and uh, most of the time we will just edit these as you see uh, in the controller it is linked to the emitter node which I showed earlier this two node and uh, so this particle node is linked to this controller and the particle data here's the particle data and also we will edit some values here. Now actually the file that we are using has a knee rotating particles which are were exported from 3ds Max or th something. Uh, knee rotating particles mean that they are a type of particles which have a property of rotating. The par particles can rotate about their own axis, but sadly, uh, Neve Scope and Morrowind cannot process this thing, so it completely doesn't work. So, for uh, make things clearer, we should just uh, rename or convert it to the basic particle type, so these things does not bother us, because as you see. Uh, in the particle data, there are a lot of uh, properties, but it has, it says it has rotations, and we don't need those uh, properties. So let's just right-click and uh, convert and the particles, and you have to do the same with the particle data. Uh, right, right-click, uh, convert and the particles data and uh, as you see it no longer has that uh, rotating property so it looks simpler now now let's sum up what we did so far so this is the node that contains all our particle information we made an extra uh, parent folder for it and inside this uh, node the particle has an emitter node, which is only a ni node now, so it only uses the this node's coordinates and rotation. And the particle needs uh, a particle system controller and particle data, but it all has to be contained in this extra ni bs particle node which uh, has this game setting uh, flag and uh, this is the actual particle node which has a particle system controller and particle data and inside the particle system controller there is the emitter linked like you see the number two node is linked and this is it and uh, Actually, now 
let's look inside the particle system controller as you see it has a lot of properties and most of the time we will just uh, change these values manually because we will know what they do uh, to change the appear appearance and behavior of the particle effect uh, the first is the flag which uh, basically determines if the animation is looped or so re repeated forever or just played only once as you see you can change it here in this window like now it will change to 12 but you can just rewrite it manually um, but uh, in reality this flag does nothing in game as there are hard-coded game settings which determines if the animation is looped or played only once it is important because the game treats the same NIF file if it is used as a spell effect or if it is used as a world object so if I use this file as a spell effect it will be only played once no matter what uh, flag I use here but if I use this uh, NIF file as a world object so I spawn it in the world uh, it will be looped uh, no matter what I do so it's only the game settings which is important and this is not but of course we can trick the game to uh, use our file as we want so we can overcome this problem so if we want to use this file as a spell effect and we want it to be played more than just once so it is repeated we can do that with some tricks also we can make uh, this effect if, we, if it is uh, spawned as a world object we can make it so that it is only played once but that needs uh, script extender support or some other animation files I'm not too good in that but it is possible now going down on the list we see frequency and phase uh, I don't usually use these but I will show these what they do uh, most you should just leave uh, this value as 1 for, for frequency and 0 for phase frequency means that the animation will be played this much times during the animation period so now the animation is played in this uh, pace but if I type in 2 here the animation will be twice as fast 4 times as fast also you can make it slower even slower but you can do the same effect more correctly with the values under here so let's just uh, uh, restore this to one the phase means that the animation will be started uh, uh, seconds later so this is in this value is in seconds if I type in one here the animation will start one second later well in game not in if scope so let, let just leave that zero now before going down further on this list let me uh, tell you about particle number uh, it is way down here so you see num particles and number val valid uh, number valid is containing information about unique particles which are not controlled by this uh, particle controller so these are 
separate particles. Uh, these are created when you export particles from 3ds Max and they will be stored here. Uh, like you see for some reason now there is one one unique particle. Uh, it has its own velocity, lifetime and other uh, properties. But uh, we don't need these kind of particles, so uh, we should always delete these. It is important to just set this number to zero. And we should uh, spam refresh like uh, 10 times or a lot of times. Also, it is only in uh, particle data, so we have to remove that as well. So you have to remove again from number valid, set it to zero, hit refresh and remove it from here. Now let's get back to particle number. Uh, this is really important, so memorize this. Uh, the definition of this is that this is the amount of particles that can be shown on the screen at a given time. So now our file has 31 particles. So if everything is going well, uh, there will be 31 particles here. Now let's say we want a little more particles than 31. Let's say we want 500. Uh, to change that, first we have to go to particles data and rewrite every uh, current particle number to the number we want. So rewrite this to 500, rewrite this to 500 and you have to hit refresh like 10 times because the program sometimes can't process or something. So just spam this refresh and you have to rewrite it here too to 500 and hit refresh again and as you see nothing is happening it is because there are some other properties that needs to be edited so we can see actually 500 particles on the screen at a time. Now the other important values are for example animation time, this is start and stop time, this determines the total animation time, as you see now it is 1 second, if we edit it to 3 seconds then animation will only restart after 3 seconds. Uh, you should always keep the start time at zero. Uh, there is emit start and stop time, which is uh, good for which determines when the particle emission start and stop. So it stops at uh, half a second, like you see it stopped, and we can edit it. Uh, and there is emit rate, which means how many particles will be emitted each second. Now it is at 60, 60 so it means that 60 particles are emitted each second. Also there is lifetime, which determines how long will each particle last based on the time of their emission. So it's 0 0.6, it means that they last roughly for half a second and then disappear. Now these properties are linked together. Uh, the lifetime, emit rate, number of particles and emission start and stop time. Also animation start and stop time are connected so we should uh, 
it needs a little bit of thinking to give them proper values because if we do this do this randomly we will get a random result which is not good so for this I made a little example to make it easier to understand so to understand what values you have to type in there are these little simple equations you need to keep in mind emit duration which is now two seconds and the emit rate is really important uh, which is again the number of particles being emitted uh, per second as the animation time is two seconds and we have total of 500 particles we have to set the emit rate to 250 if we set it to 500 uh, the particles will be would be only emitted for one second and after that emission would stop because the particle number means that only 500 particle can be shown on the screen at the given time and also we have to change the animation duration based on the lifetime of the particle because if we set a shorter animation duration then the combination of these the particles would suddenly disappear so the animation would end before the particles could uh, die on die normally so let's just type in these values but before doing that let me just uh, open this effect in Morrowind to see how it looks in game so I use a uh, magic effect replacer mode so now uh, this restore health has the original illusion cast effect and this is the original and if we save over it which we haven't done before save you see that now only that one particle is remaining So let's rewrite those new values and check how it looks in game again. So um, emit rate should be 250 and animation duration should be 6 seconds and I think yes and emit start and stop time should be one and three seconds so if I save it you can see in game animation only starts after one second and you can see a lot of lot more particles and I forgot to set the lifetime to three seconds and save again so now I you see particles have longer lifetime now let's get back to the other properties in the system controller there is particle speed which determines the speed of the particle right after it is emitted so let's set it to zero and as you will see particles still move and that is because uh, the particle has an extra modifier which is gravity but we will talk about those later so just delete it and now particles will not move let's check it in game so as you see they do not move you can write fancy stuff now let's change the speed back to 100 uh, there is also speed random and lifetime random properties they are fun but I will show them later now let's go back a little to the emitter node 
as you see particles are not spawned in zero and but they are translated away a little because we have set coordinates away from zero as you see here but what I wanted to point out is that it is important that this container NBS particle node has the exact same translation and rotation as the emitter node here. It is required because if you forget this sometimes the first few particles can be spawned in the wrong uh, point so just remember this when you change the emitter coordinates and rotation always copy it afterwards here so but of course so let's try something like change the emission point and rotation a little you will see particles won't be spawned here but uh, they will go like that and after you've done this you have to uh, control C control V the same coordinates so they will work properly uh, and of course if you edit the coordinates you know, on the parent nodes like here and here it works too like uh, move this a little higher or scale it a little make it bigger rotate it it also works but it will rotate or translate the whole thing so if I edit the values here it will affect everything uh, that is contained in this node but so it rotates the whole thing but if you edit the emitter node it uh, doesn't rotate the whole particle effect it only changes the initial direction of the particle's speed now let's go back to the controller so as you see there are these uh, vertical direction and angle and horizontal direction and angle properties uh, let's set all these to zero and save it and now you see particles are coming out of a now let's go back to the controller settings so moving on we have these direction and angle vertical and horizontal properties uh, let's check how the game now uh, shows the effect as you see particles are a little bit spreading uh, so if we set all these to zero you will see that they are moving in a complete straight line now these values are in radian and not in degree so I made a little example to show you what they mean so at zero the directions will always point to Z axis so there are three axis X Y and Z and uh, the vertical and horizontal values stand, stand for change in the vertical and horizontal planes so let's call this the vertical plane and this the horizontal plane and uh, let's say this is the horizontal plane and if I so sorry doesn't matter let's just call this vertical plane and uh, the vertical direction and vertical angle belongs to this plane and let's say I want my particles to 
not travel in the z-axis upwards like now I want them to travel on the x-axis and I want them to not move only in a straight line but I want them to spread over this f uh, 90 uh, degree angle so to do that I have to first set the direction, the vertical direction which is measured from z-axis it's 90 degrees so I have to type here 1.4058 radian and I have to also type in that uh, angle here so let's type that and as you will see it will be spread like this but I think it shows bad in if scope so let's check in game yeah, it's, it shows correct in game as you see and as you see we only edited values on one plane so if I start to edit the horizontal angle too uh, the particles will not on, travel only on a plane they will travel in a cone like this so with the combination of these values you can achieve pretty fun results um, here are the basic uh, coordinates if you want the particles to be emitted in a circle which is normal to the given axis so if you want particles to be emitted uh, in a circle on the z-axis you have to type in these let's do that and move it a little down and as you see they will be emitted like that, it's pretty cool uh, so memorize these values, these are important now I wanted to show you another thing and to visualize that it's best to create a sphere of particles um, move the emitter a little higher and what I want to show you is that so now the 500 particles are continuously em emitted but if you want them to be released at all, all at once like really fast you have to increase the emit rate to a really high number so it means if I added this to 30,000 this means that there would be 30,000 particles emitted per second if the particle number would be that high but we only have 500 particles so this only means that our 500 particles will be released at this pace so let's check it out in game Bam! It's a nice firework. And uh, it's good to show you how um, speed random works. As you see now, particle is fixed speed, so every particle has the same speed. But if I give another 100 random, then the particle speed will be at minimum 100 or at maximum 200 so let's check that out as you see it's a little me bit more random you can do it uh, in a way to that uh, the normal speed is 1 and you give big value to the random so there will be particles which stay more close to the center so it's even more random and also there is lifetime random 
which does similar things. So now particles are there for 3 seconds, but if I change it to uh, give it a random of an additional 3 seconds, this means that there will be particles which can last for 6 seconds, but as we increase the life time, we have to increase the animation time too if we want to sh see those lifetimes so check that out now as you see we have two waves of uh, particles which we do not want this is because as the old particles die they give uh, room to new particles to be spawned. We have a total of 500 particles to be al allowed on the screen. Uh, to fix this we just have to edit the emit emission, st emission time to a shorter duration. Like as, as the particles are, are now emitted instantly it's enough to just uh, set a tenth of a second emissions emission time so as you see it will be now fixed but based on the same logic we can do more waves of uh, particles uh, let's set this back to zero so if we set the emit rate to a thousand which means a thousand particles per second uh, as this emit rate is double the amount of number of particles this will result in uh, a half a second of particle emission and a half a second of no emission but let's uh, decrease the lifetime so we give room for more particles and uh, increase the speed a little and increase the emit stop time to a little more so we can see the effect yes as you see sometimes there is emission sometimes there is not because sometimes there are no room for more particles now moving on I want to show you this uh, start random property which is really useful and uh, for that let's change the effect a little uh, so I want the Z circle again I want the particles to be emitted at 100 um, I don't want more waves so let's just uh, so uh, I let's say I have two sec two seconds of emit time this means I have to divide the particle number by, number by 2 so emit rate should be 250 uh, particle lifetime can be 3 seconds um, and uh, so the effects effect now looks just like this and what start random does is simple to understand if you just look at it yes so it randomizes the starting point on any given axis let's increase it a little bit more let's check it in game yeah it's like this let's decrease the speed a little to like 70 Yes. Also, there is uh, the other axis, 
so if I type in 300 and set zero speed particles will be spawned in a cube as you see so particles with this start random are the best to show you the gravity uh, properties which are the most fun uh, to show you those let's increase the particle number a little bit more like 5000 uh, this is usually not rec recommended for in-game effects because of potato pieces but let's check that out oh yeah I, ha I have to refresh the emit rate to 10 times as much yeah, as you see <laughs> you can observe things more clearly now this will be an important part because as I said earlier uh, the game treats the same NIV file differently if it is used as a spell effect like so far or it is treated differently if it is a world object so this uh, script created by greatness 7 has uh, an option to instantly spawn the NIV file on the ground uh, I have spawned it but it is not visible yet because I have to set a couple of uh, flags and convert a couple of nodes to make it work um, first talk about this uh, NIBS particle node here which we named as game setting and this flag is the important part here so a particle can be trailing or stationary a uh, trailing particle means that the emitted particles use the world coordinate system not the characters character coordinate system uh, or the object coordinate system that it is emitted from so non trailing particles mean that the particles will stay with the object and uh, these flags decide this uh, behav behavior and these flags are actually different if the NIF file is used as a spell effect and it is different if the NIF file is used, used as a world object uh, actually these flags are uh, responsible for other mysterious things too but let's forget that for now. So with the spell effect we will need only two flags. So flag 10 is for trailing. Let's check it out in game what it is. So trailing means that if I move with my character the particles will not follow the character. They will stay in the uh, game world for the cell coordinate system and if I change the flag to uh, 138 then they will be stationary or non-training which means that they will follow the character if I move with it And this is important if you want to make a magic projectile or an arrow with trailing particles or other stuff. So you just edit this uh, NBS particle node flag here. Now, so far we used the NIF file as a spell effect. But now, if we want to use it as a world object, we have to uh, transform couple of nodes so the game can use it properly uh, to do this uh, particle ne particles need a 
NBS animation node as their uh, containing node with a certain flag and without its particles won't load or they would be frozen uh, so now we have to uh, convert the particle containing node to an EBS animation node and to do that right click on it and select convert and an EBS animation node and we have to give it a flag number now there are a couple of flag numbers that you can use but the result is uh, pretty unpredictable so I usually just uh, try them out and see which is the best so but the most frequently one that I use most of the time is this it's best for looped animation uh, also there is but uh, the problem with this is that and with most of the flags is that uh, the looped animation will not start at uh, zero instead it will be started in a random phase so there is another flag that I use which is this it's best to it can fix problems uh, when the animation does not start at zero but it needs uh, an, uh, other uh, tricks like maybe uh, script extender support or other animation files also you can use these numbers but let's just keep this and as I said earlier you have to use a, if you use your NIF file as a world object you have to use a different NBS particle node flag and let's uh, set this to this number and let's check it in game yes so I spawned it and now it is a world object and also it is important that sometimes even spell effects require this NBS animation node so to sum up these are the flags that I usually use so if the NIF is a world object you have to use these NBS animation node flags and these particle node flags and if you use a NIF as a spell effect you have to use these values so now we have this NIF file spawned here but as you see this is not a continuous uh, looped effect so let's make it uh, looped and to do that uh, let's make a 10 second animation and uh, let's change the emission start and stop time the same as the animation time also so yes let's check it out as you see it uh, does strange things it is because we did not set the emit rate um, as we have a 10 second animation time now and we have 5000 particles we have to uh, make the emit rate 500 um, so now it should be continuous and also give a little more lifetime to the particles like 10 seconds and we can change the particle size as well so now it is 10 if we increase it to 100 it will look a little ridiculous pretty interesting and if we decrease it to 1 it looks like almost invisible uh, so let's change it to 7 
also we can change the texture easily so as you see this uh, particle node has a couple of properties here uh, texturing material and alpha property this year uh, we will talk about those later uh, now let's just uh, quickly change the texture to make it look better uh, so I have a lot of uh, textures uh, piled up maybe I will share some so let's just use this and uh, so it looks a uh, little bit nicer now and now we can play with the gravity controller and to add that we have to go into the particle system controller and down here there is a particle extra property and right, uh, click just uh, left click on the sign and select new gravity and it will be here uh, now first the NISCO program doesn't show all of the properties of uh, new gravity it's a bug in the program so to fix this we just have to after we edit new gravity we have to save over the file and click away and back and now we have uh, this controller property and it is important that we type in the particle system controller node number and save again if, if we don't uh, link the controller together the game will crash now as you see if you check out the system controller down here you see it has a knee gravity linked here so gravity has two types first there is wind and there is point gravity let's check out uh, wind gravity first uh, wind gravity needs a direction so it determines in which direction will the particles move let's uh, give it uh, this direction so it will particles will move on the x axis also give them a little force which only means that they will change speed based on this force uh, let's check it in game yes as you see uh, at first particles on the left side at the start have zero speed and uh, the speed is gradually increasing to the maximum 30 which is this force number okay now I changed the location a little bit as you see here my character is colliding with the particles it gets stuck in them so there is a fix for this to disable particle collision uh, to do that we have to convert the main node to a knee collision switch node and set the flag to zero uh, so what this knee collision switch does is that every one of it uh, it disables the collision of every each of its uh, children nodes so everything under it uh, normally you don't have this knee collision switch property in NIF scope uh, to see it you need a custom NIF that XML file which is also made by greatness 7 and after you replace the original one you will see this uh, node here you can use it also this XML file uh, fixes a lot of things like you see normally these gravity values as unknown so it is recommended to get that file now let's go back to the gravity node 
Uh, as you see here there is a decay property which if at zero value it does nothing but if you give it value it basically disables the gravity's effect after a distance from the gravity plane so it uh, is kind of tricky to work with this in if scope because the values are not really easy to use but it's possible as you will see so the working values are between 0 and 1 let's give it a value of this and check the effect um, so as you see the gravity plane is in the middle of this uh, particle cube and uh, now the gravity is only affecting particles really close to that plane so let's change the decay a little further now you see a little more particles are affected let's change it a little more now you see even more particles are moving and we can change it even lower and if as we are uh, uh, approaching zero it, the gravity starts to affect all particles so when we use decay uh, the position of the gravity plane can be useful so let's make let's uh, shift the uh, translate the gravity plane to the edge of this uh, particle cube as you as we use the start random values of 300 it is a cube of 300 times 300 times 300 so we have to uh, translate the gravity plane to 150 if we want it to be at the edge of the particle cube so let's check it out as you see now it only affects particles at the side of the uh, cube and also we can again decrease the decay and you can achieve cool stuff with this also So as you see, particles on the right side are not affected by the gravity. But as we go to the left, the gravity is increasing. Uh, also with wind gravity you can have any kind of direction. So let's change this randomly to give it a random vector. and check it out you will see that the particles are moving to a different direction ok now let's try point gravity and see what it does so point gravity does not need a direction so let's set it to zero um, and uh, put the gravity center to one corner of this uh, cube and as the side dimensions are 300 to move it to one corner we have to use these middle coordinates and uh, this height coordinate and let's disable decay for now and let's check it out what it does mm, so it's quite interesting as it uh, gives a replication of the original particle cube mm. as you see the gravity center is, is at the center 
uh, corner of the cube and the particles are swinging back and forth uh, of the gravity center uh, we can increase the speed a little and it stays the same also we can try out decay it works the same way this is too high as it doesn't do anything now now it starts to work so as you see it only pulls uh, particles close to it now it's more visible also you can uh, set negative speed to it so then it will pull particles away and let's try with, with that with uh, decay can also attach multiple gravity properties to the same particle system controller uh, it works like a chain of controllers or properties so as you see the particle system controller has this particle extra unique gravity and in this node you can describe a next modifier and if you click on it you can uh, assign another gravity and let's uh, add like five of these one two three four five and again you have to save it and uh, set the particle controller manually as the program cannot do it some way and uh, let's make it that we put a gravity center to each of the corners of this cube and also we can uh, make a wind gravity uh, let's say downwards so downwards 30 force wind gravity down and let's make these the corner gravity points so uh, I'm just copying the coordinates now uh, so this will be another corner this will be the opposite corner and this is the last corner and give the same uh, gravity force to them and make them point gravity and give them the same decay and check it out in game hmm. maybe we, ne we need a little bigger decay so it's a quite interesting effect let's increase the gravity a little Oh, 
Uh, yeah, it can do random stuff. I just wanted to demonstrate that uh, you can use uh, multiple gravity centers at once. We can, for fun, move uh, the gravity centers a little further. So. and increase the gravity force again let's remove the decay remove the decay mm -hmm. so it's uh, another different effect Here I want to show you another cool thing. So now the particles are moving in a looped animation, but you can uh, actually freeze the animation uh, at a given time, so it is easy. As you see, this is the particle system controller, and here is the animation flag. Um, and as you see now it is in looped mode but if we change it to repeat only once it uh, is kind of bugged in game and it the result is that the animation will be frozen like this it's pretty cool for a lot it, it has a lot of uses I think I will show some later so you can set at what time do you want the animation to be frozen and to do that you only need to edit the stop time so the animation is now frozen at uh, 10 seconds if we change this to 1 it will be frozen at the first second which is the starting cube and if we increase it 5 seconds we have this uh, mid stage and if we increase it further uh, also increase the particle lifetime uh, this is another further stage let's increase the particle number a little particle size sorry too much so there is another fun thing that I wanted to show you here there is this strange 13 flag and if you use this what it does is that the animation will be played once and it will be frozen at the end and won't play again so the animation will be frozen at 10 seconds let's check it out it plays normally and at 10 seconds it uh, stops and you can make it that the animation start uh, is uh, shifted forward so 
if we set here phase 5 it means that the animation will start at 5 seconds and then end at 10 seconds as you see the animation didn't start at the cube phase also we can increase it further so only the end, end of the animation will be shown also we can play with the frequency here like increase it to 10 times as much let's check the result it's pretty cool I think let's do that again a little more time yeah, it's pretty cool I think it has a pretty lot of uses because when the animation is frozen I think it uh, doesn't cause big uh, FPS drops uh, so you can make it that the animation is played once and frozen and you can apply a Nevis controller uh, which hides everything so it's one way to play particle animations only once now I want to show you another use of these uh, frozen particles so first let's remove all these gravity effects from the particle you can just easily remove it by control delete and it's gone let's set back the normal frozen the simple frozen particle flag so it's a frozen cube and you can do do this cool effect if we increase the start random to like 10 let's say 7000 on in all directions and it's instant stars it's pretty cool and you can do all kinds of uh, effects with this if you apply a different texture or different particle size as uh, let's just increase the particle size to 60 let it load, they are a little bigger now they are a little too big and now I will want to show you that this kind of particle is actually perfect to create uh, different kinds of uh, fog or mysterious uh, effects so let's uh, decrease the particle number to only 500 so it is FPS friendly uh, 500, 500 and refresh refresh here too let's change the cube size to this and uh, let's increase the particle size and you will see as uh, with this texture it's uh, you don't see shit but it's kind of interesting too but it needs a texture especially made for this and I have made this texture earlier uh, it's here and this one and if I save it you see it is uh, kind of green now 
it is because uh, there is a material property which I will talk in more detail later but let's just make all these black and this one black too and save now you see it's actually hard to notice it's like a really soft fog and you can easily make it uh, look uh, denser fog if you give it a texture with a bigger uh, a stronger texture like you see now it is a little stronger fog well basically only by changing the texture you can create all kinds of uh, fog uh, like you see now it is kind of strong and you don't see too much too far and as you see it has a characteristic where the particles on the far particles are too white and it is because of the alpha flag the particle has and if you just change that you can create uh, total new effects so let's try some out so I do not know the definition of this alpha property but basically what it does is that it makes the game render things differently uh, based on what texture is applied to the mesh uh, it is important that the texture what kind of alpha channel does the texture have what kind of color channel does the texture have and the result in game will be also different when there are multiple particles behind each other and they are transparent so you will see the resulting effect of multiple objects behind each other differently um, when you click on this flag you see there are a lot of options here I'm sure there are some documentation about this somewhere and they all mean something I just usually randomly change the values and see how it looks in game so the base flag that most objects use is this 13th flag but if we just uh, play with the numbers and check how they look you can get pretty interesting effects like inverting the textures make uh, them change color or brightness or all kinds of stuff here, here are some fun uh, flag numbers if someone wants to check it I will just show a few of them and uh, later I will also mention these alpha property and the other properties for example when I will make a fire effect mm, but now let's just change the alpha flag so now the fog looks like this and if I change the alpha flag to this you see that the fog is much denser and it's a pretty cool effect as you cannot see anything um, and also if uh, I want to change the color of the fog I can do that easily without changing the texture as you see this uh, particle node has three properties the texturing property the alpha property which we just used and this material property which uh, uh, I will show it later in more detail but 
you can just change the color, color here let's copy this to the others and as you see let me change back the base of a flag as you see now it is kind of red but it is still white in the middle it is because to do that you have to change another thing and that is uh, vertex colors of particles now later on I will also show this in more detail but let's just try this out how it works is that as you remember the particles have uh, particle data and in that you can also specify that the particles have vertex colors I do not know the definition of that I just can show you how it works so if you right click on this I mean if you uh, click on this drop down menu you see that it we have 500 particles and it shows the color of all these uh, particles you can set them by each other so this this is black this is green and it is tedious to do and if you set all these to red and right click update just in case um, it is red because I used it earlier and if you save it you will see that the fog is completely red now let's change the flag again yes it's another effect it's like a shader and also as I mentioned there are a lot of fun alpha flags let me show you another this makes uh, all particles pitch black like this so it is quite cool also you can use this for really spooky dungeons or areas it can be quite uh, frightening if you see a scamp attack you out of the darkness and it's a pretty smooth effect as you walk out of it it gets lighter smoothly and you do not see too much uh, particle lines crossing the ground so also my FPS isn't dropping it's quite cool I think and you can uh, change the shape of this particle cloud to whatever you want you can also make it move do whatever you like so it's limitless use now let me show you what happens if I place this dark fog in an interior let's place it in the middle here and uh, let's cast a little light and as you see you cannot see through the fog and if you move through it it's a smooth effect also you can make the fog a little darker by increasing the particle size or the other settings it's pretty dark you cannot see shit but it's still cool and again you can uh, uh, also try out the other 
alpha flags or particle color or change the other settings as you see the red fog is also an awesome effect I can imagine this in a lot of places or change the alpha flag it's a little stronger As you see, we change the multiple properties to change the color. Uh, first, here in the material property, then here in particle system controllers uh, unknown color, and also in the particle data vertex colors. And I'm not sure how they are combined, but you need to play with both of these three properties so now let's check it out it's green fog but if uh, I change the unknown color here to like red it will change to middle between red and green because the material property is green and if I change the vertex color to like pink actually somewhere nothing will happen or a very little change hard to notice but still vertex color is important because if I check that it doesn't have then only the material property will be active and this unknown color will not work so to make this uh, unknown color here work you have to always check this has vertex colors here and also if I change the material color to pitch black Um, you see that this red color will only come from the this unknown color and if I change this to white uh, you see that the resulting color will come from the unknown color and the vertex colors here well it's quite complicated so you have to just uh, play with these values until you get the best result and of course if you make everything uh, black the particles will disappear As you see. Also I noticed that uh, it is recommended to not increase the particle size too much as it results in an FPS drop so just uh, try to edit the other values to make the fog stronger you can easily do that by changing the texture or the color settings or alpha flag because so let's change this alpha flag back to 13 as you see the fog is, fog is hardly visible but if we increase the particle size to 500 the fog is much more visible but as I noticed as I walk through it FPS does strange things well it isn't a big problem on my computer but maybe average computer will have 
problems with this so just try to use the lowest particle size but change the alpha value or color or texture yeah this is another type of uh, alpha flag hmm, let's check out uh, other colors with this It's pretty interesting also. And uh, with this particle size I do not have any FPS problems. So yeah, there are infinite uh, possibilities. If you combine the alpha flag, color, texture and other settings. Yeah, and uh, the textures that I were using were super simple. They are just uh, black dots, uh, and you can easily create them in any kind of program. Like, let's open one in Photoshop. So the channels look like this just a slight uh, gray dot in the middle and you can just create these like this Oops. and it's important to create these textures so that the at the edges the color is completely black so that the corners of and the edges of the texture are not visible in game and as you see now I use the white texture because I can easily change the color in if scope if I use a white texture and change the colors later with the material material property or the vertex colors or the other stuff but I can also use a color texture and it will also work but actually there is a cool effect which you can only achieve if the texture has colors and it is made with a texture meep map which I will show now so if I uh, open up one of these textures you see if you have this uh, NVIDIA DDS plugin I will put a link in the description of the video. You can have these load meep maps checked, and uh, the you don't see anything yet because this texture does not have meep maps yet. But if you save it as DDS, you can check to generate meep maps and if you've done that you can open it again and check load meep maps and you will see this and what this is actually is that it shows uh, so the texture will be shown differently from different view distances and you can separately edit how the texture will look from different uh, view distances so we can 
do fun things with this like uh, just uh, edit the color of the textures differently in the different uh, stages so let's make this uh, let's say Hmm. green then let's make this let's say red then let's make this another color and again and you can not only change the color you can change the complete appearance if you want uh, and the uh, number of the levels are based on the texture size so as you see there are one two three four five six seven eight levels and uh, this number is uh, based on the resolution of the texture I think uh, now it is I don't know what the size is but if you increase the size you can increase the levels, number of the levels ok I think it's enough now and let's save it to this and check use existing mipmaps I think and check it out how it looks in game so this is the one and save it uh, let's change the colors back to white or gray oops crash it happens sometimes Yeah, it's quite cool as you see if you look it from a bigger distance you see you see this uh, purplish color and as you move closer closer to it you see it is green and the uh, changing is quite smooth it gra gradually changes and as you see we only reached the third stage by the time in the third color so if we place this uh, fog to another place when we can move uh, away let's make this at night uh, okay so if you move away, you see the particles are changing color.
Now I will want to show you another thing which is particle bomb. So it's a completely different thing, so let's just uh, transform this uh, fog effect to a basic particle effect uh, which we had earlier. So let's change the texture to um, let's say like uh, this one. Let's make the animation continuous Decrease the particle size as well And let's increase the particle number Back to 5000 Now if you do this you have to update the vertex color node uh, property and refresh this as well and change the color to white to red yeah, maybe red let's see how it looks now Mm -hmm. Change the alpha to so now it will be good to demonstrate uh, the particle bomb. So you can add the particle bomb the same way as you add the uh, knee gravity node. You have to go into the knee particle system controller and at particle extra you select particle bomb again at first it will also uh, miss the controller property so you have to save over it and when you have it you have to type in the controller node number so it won't crash the game and save again so it will work now this particle bomb, uh, you will only see these properties correctly if you have that NIFScope XML file made by Greatness7, which I mentioned earlier. So these properties are similar to the simple gravity node, but it has, you can set timing in it and you will have different types of gravity so the start time is in seconds and it says that at what time the gravity will take effect based on the animation time in this particle system controller so we have a 10 seconds animation and if we want the particle bomb to take effect uh, after 3 seconds, then we type here 3. Duration is speaks for itself. If we type here 1, that it means that the gravity effect will only uh, last for 1 second and after that it will disappear. The delta V is the change of speed. If it is positive, it will pull particles away. If it is negative, it will. It's the opposite. And here you have, you can have three types of uh, gravity symmetry type. The spherical symmetry is the same as the gravity node, which means that the gravity will be only centered in one point. The cylindrical symmetry means that the gravity will be coming from a line and planar symmetry means that gravity will come from a plane. 
so let's select cylindrical symmetry to try this particle bomb out cylindrical symmetry needs a direction as it is a gravity line and uh, let's select uh, Z axis for direction and check it out how it looks so as you see it only the gravity pulling uh, only happened after three seconds and it stops after one second I mean the particles the new particles will not be affected so the decay here is similar to the knee gravity so it decides which particles will be affected by the gravity effect based on the distance between the particle and the gravity line or point or plane but here it, the values are easy to use as it, if it is a uh, 300 it will be the same distance as we set here so if I type in 300 only particles uh, lesser than this distance will be affected so let's check it out Right, I forgot to set the decay here. You can select linear or exponential, but it doesn't really have a big difference. Right, as you see, the particles on the edge weren't affected. And what I want to show here is that the decay is uh, independent of the symmetry type so the decay will be always uh, spherical and it won't be cylindrical or planar sadly now let's check out the planar symmetry it also needs a direction the normal vector of the plane let's make the plane uh, vertical and save it yes so as you see the plane is in this direction and it pulls away particles but as we have this decay setting as I told earlier it is still a spherical decay and not a planar decay so let's just delete the decay so this is how actually the planar particle bomb works And same as with the gravity node, you can easily add multiple particle bombs. So let's add like seven of this particle bomb quickly. One, two, three, four, five. And save. And again, you have to fix the controllers everywhere. So let's create a random surprise effect where particles are pulled away in all directions and shapes. So let's start with this planar symmetry. Uh, make the duration of that only half a second. So the next modifier will start at 3.5 seconds. 
let's give it uh, a little smaller speed use the same here that it has have a similar duration and set also planar symmetry and give it a different normal direction so let's check it out first Now actually let's change the emit uh, stop time to 3 seconds so we do not have new particles so it will be smoother actually change the second particle bomb uh, plane direction to the same as the first so we and uh, change the speed to negative value so it will make the particles stop and let's do that in the other direction as well so let's start this at 4 seconds half a second duration 200 speed planar symmetry this axis and the same uh, start time is this duration is this negative speed so it should look interesting let it reset mm -hmm. now let me increase the speed of these planar particle bombs a little so the particles are moving a little further and uh, edit the next particle bomb let's make it a cylindrical and let it start at 5 seconds with a duration of 2 seconds and give it a bigger speed like 4000 let it reset Let's increase the speed a little higher on these last modifiers. And let it reset. So now I will want to show you how to create a vertex of particles um, like a tornado or a swirl. Actually you can only do it with a trick with uh, this particle bomb as uh, Nifscope doesn't support or Morrowind doesn't support the 
vertex modifier which 3dx max program has for example if I make a particle in 3ds max like this snow and attach this vertex like you see it shows in around which axis uh, the particles will be rotated uh, let's attach this swirl to the particles and you see that they are uh, rotated around this axis and if you would want to export this to a NIF file this vortex wouldn't be in the file so we have to do it uh, in another way but the swirl can swirls can be really cool effect so it's important that uh, there is a way to do this so let me quickly transform this uh, cube of particles into a line of particles with a continuous effect so let's change the particles back to a smaller uh, amount and 10 second animation 5 second particle lifetime what else yes and the start random should be 0 particle speed should be 150 they should move in a straight line yes like that oops and remove the particle bombs just like that also sorry emit rate should be 100 not 10 Hmm. What did I miss? Oh yes, emit stop time should be also 10. So you have a line of particles. Let's uh, change the axis. First, let me do a little presentation about how gravity works. So, you see, there is no gravity now, particles are moving in a straight line, and if you, if we just add a single gravity point, with, uh, let's say, 300 uh, velocity and move the center a little away from the line we will uh, get this effect as you see if you do this with the gravity point the particles will always center around it and you won't be able to do a tornado effect because let me show you this uh, by a, with a drawing so if this is your gravity center this star you cannot do your particles to move like this because the particles will always orbit around this point also what is important is that it is really tricky to find the gravity force and particle speed 
value combination to get a perfect circle as you see now this is not a perfect circle because let's say I change the gravity force to a little lesser it's different shape and if I change the particle speed again oh now it's a, it's a perfect circle actually I think we are lucky and we did this by 200 speed 250 gravity force and the gravity center is this far away from the particle line actually this requires some math to calculate the proper distance and the force and speed of the particles I was just now lucky but still I cannot uh, make the particles to go in this z-axis so to do that we will need a particle bomb with cylindrical symmetry and actually we were incredibly lucky to get this perfect circle as uh, usually the particles either go like this if the gravity is too strong or they just uh, swing around back and forth so we really got lucky with those uh, force numbers now let me show you what happens if the particles are not coming out in a straight line but what happens if they come out in a cone so you actually get a sphere which is also pretty cool but this is not what we need and it is important that if you want your particles to go around the perfect circle around the gravity center you have to have an initial speed um, perpendicular to this uh, axis because if you have a speed like in this direction the particles will be uh, moving in a path like this so you have to set the direction in this way and with the proper speed so that so that the particles are not getting closer or farther away from the gravity center now let's try out how the particle bomb works with the same values as the gravity so let's delete the gravity and remove this uh, vertical angle setting add the particle bomb set the controller and we have to use here the negative speed as it works in the opposite way as the gravity and spherical symmetry make it always active during the 10 second animation time and let's check it out as you see I enter the same values as the as in the gravity node but here the same values result in this not too perfect circle so I have to uh, twinkle with the values to get this perfect circle again and uh, we want to make the particles now not uh, starting a horizontal axis but a little 
upwards so that they will move up, uh, go up like a tornado. Mm, I actually forgot to set this to cylindrical symmetry and with cylindrical symmetry you need to give an axis to it but it still looks the same so let's change the vertical direction to it's like 40 degrees upwards and as you see it's a little bit too much so let's just use this angle it's also too much and uh, we can increase the particle lifetime to let's say 20 seconds and decrease the emit rate so that we do not exceed the available number of particles here and let's check that out As you see it is a continuous effect but it's a little slow for a tornado so let's change some other values as well like uh, particle speed and increase the gravity force also. Now let me try to change the particle speed a little and the gravity force a little so maybe we get a faster vortex effect but as you see here is the cylindrical symmetry axis but you see the particles are swinging back and forth because either the gravity force is too strong or too weak or the particles initial speed is too large or the particle emission point is too close to the cylindrical symmetry axis so we have to change either of these properties to get a nice sphere so let's try to move the gravity axis in this direction like a little further away as you see it's getting closer to a circle and now it is actually a nice circle but it is too large and what the problem is is that I can adjust simply scale the whole node because particles are not scaling very well as well as simple meshes like because it interferes with particle size and other properties so let's not scale it this way and uh, move the position of the symmetrical symmetry line back and try to play with the other values like I think the gravity force is too small so let's try to increase that
It's getting closer to a circle. As you see, it's pretty random to and you need to get lucky to find the proper values but now it's actually quite nice uh, swirl tornado thing so let me change other values to make it more even more look like a tornado and first let's bring back the cyclone starting point to the ground so we can see what's going on and as you see the particles are moving in a spiral and in a straight line it's because we did not add a starting angle yet if we so now they are moving in a spiral line but if we add vertical angle particles will move uh, more randomly and let's, uh, because now the tornado is too high let's decrease the lifetime and increase the emit rate And now, as you see, particles are moving out of uh, emitted from one, one point, but we can set a start random. So, particles will be completely starting from a random point. So this cyclone is uh, more realistic now. And we can also add speed random here. So now let's say that our twister here is pretty realistic. And uh, let's change the texture here. So I threw random textures on this and you can see it's now kind of a dust storm fitting this area but I would need a better texture or better alpha flag but it's kind of cool already or I can try others like uh, now there is this result uh, I think it's pretty nice and kind of realistic for a dust uh, twister it looks pretty nice I think and you can easily animate it to move um, on the ground or a, a set path or disappear after a given time so it's not always there I think it's nice it was made with uh, this alpha flag number and a texture like uh, this. Uh, I opened it in Photoshop so you can see it better. Now let's say I want to make a um, fire tornado with uh, additional particle effects in it. So let's just quickly change the texture. To let's say this, and I want to add uh, smaller shiny, sparkly 
particles in it to make it look uh, more realistic and not only an orange twisting fog effect. So, so now here I will want to show you how to easily create duplicate copies of the same particle. So we are in if scope and this is the particle main node and we just right click copy branch and select the parent node of this and select paste branch so what happened is that we have the exact same particle but all the node and property numbers are uh, changed to a new one so right now what only happened is that this firestorm is twice as dense and bright so let's change the second particles to the smaller shiny particle effect so we do not want uh, too much of these particles, so only like a few of them, so reduce the emit rate and we do not want them to be big, so let's decrease the particle size and change the texture to a shiny fire particle like this and actually I could only make this kind of effect and not make it too white or shiny uh, with uh, reducing the vertex colors on the original particle to uh, almost black it's really close to black but it was uh, kind of grey so let's restore the colors to white and change the alpha flag to the basic alpha flag and you see we will have these smaller particle effects uh, so let's check it out as you see it's not perfect let's reduce the number or sorry the size a little decrease the emit rate as well again and you can add uh, multiple particles with different textures to make it even more realistic add uh, particles with uh, smoke or black texture so there are a lot of ways to make this even more realistic also I can easily change the original alpha flag here to this number it's pretty nice for fire effects well it's too bright but I could create another copy of the whole particle and combine it with the previous alpha flag so it could be easily done now here I want to show you a trick so with the most alpha flags particles when they overlap each other or when you three see through them the result is completely white and too bright and uh, it's with most alpha flags like uh, this is with this uh, 13 basic flag and in the middle particles are too bright and no matter if your texture is actually dark or has a lot of black parts or you 
set the particle vertex color to almost black like I did here or the material property to almost black uh, particles will still be white and bright when they overlap each other and there is a trick to create true dark uh, particles so we will need this alpha flag and other, a couple of other uh, alpha flags work the same way they have this uh, invert property or there are other kinds of inverting alpha flags what it does is that it inverts the color of the particles and this results in actually that when the particles are overlapping they get darker and darker instead of being brighter and white so let me show you it in game it works nice and uh, but now actually we do not want blue color so if you want a orange or red but dark particle you have to you you have to actually invert the texture of the sorry invert the color of the original texture so oops this was from testing so let me open this texture and I have to invert it manually there are a lot of ways to do that like uh, change the color to like this color and the inverted version of this is something like red or orange I hope so let's save this uh, texture somewhere and let me load it uh, not here it's here and as you see with uh, using that blue texture we get a red color and uh, when the particles are intersecting it is actually black inside so let's uh, check this in game and as you see it is a blood red color not actually orange so we should play around with the texture color but you get the concept and uh, I usually use this trick in a lot of spell effects because uh, having these dark particles can bring a lot of nice effects as you see you can now see through the particles and if we want an effect where the middle is completely black then we have to use a texture which has a complete white parts in it so let's change the color to like this purple and uh, let's uh, add the little white uh, part to the middle and uh, make it smoother 
and save it. And as you see, it has now a white, completely white part in the middle. And now the inverted version of this color is actually green, so that's not we what we want. So let's change it to more reddish color. And actually it's purple now, but it's okay. So as you see, as the particle has completely white parts, the inverted version of the that will be completely black. And you can also use this uh, method or trick if you want to create fog effects like I showed earlier. There are still a couple of properties for particles that I haven't showed yet. So let's transform this uh, green twister we got here to a simple particle so just uh, set the basic uh, alpha flag remove all the particle bomb effects and yes and reduce the particle size set back the start random values and reset the vertical angle and the other angle as well Alright, and find a better texture for testing. Like this one. And actually increase the particle size. And let's change the material property back to white. Alright. I think let's add the gravity point above this line so we can see the particles easier. Um, like this point gravity above the particles and save it to add the controller uh, oops I set the direction instead of the position and as I see I have still this speed random, so we said that. Okay. So, so the new modifier that I want to show you is particle growth fade, and you also have to save 
first and at the controller. Um, there is no point in adding multiple party growth fades after each other uh, because only one will work mostly. So what it does is that these values are in seconds I think and normally uh, the particle sizes along uh, as they travel stay the same and with this modifier you can easily change that in a way that you like so um, let's say we want that the particles are disappearing right as they reach the final point and uh, they gradually decrease in size so the lifetime is currently at 2.5 seconds so if I type here the same amount this means that from the start the particles are going to uh, slowly decrease in size and after 2.5 seconds it, they will reach zero size as you see now and you can do the opposite way if you type the grow it will mean that the particles will start as zero size and they will reach the full 80 size after 2.5 seconds and you can combine these values if you want the particles to start and end as zero size you can add values to both of these and as you see this is the maximum particle sizes and the start and end are zero and you can achieve nice effects with this also let's increase the particle size and also if you add the particle lifetime random in the particle system controller it will mean that let's say I add uh, 5 second uh, random lifetime and decrease the original lifetime that there will be particles with uh, lifetime of 5.5 seconds and that will mean that there will be particles which will have full size for a long period and uh, those particles which have only 1.5 second lifetime <coughs> they will never reach the full size so let me edit this a little so it's just uh, more random but still at the end the particles are uh, completely disappearing even if you add this particle lifetime random this is just what I wanted to show you okay so earlier I used different uh, particle color modifiers like the color in particle data or in particle system controller or particle material but uh, I wasn't too accurate when I described them what they do so since then I tested them out again and now I want to sum up the important things so to do that uh, I will change the texture to a 
completely white colorless texture so I can show there uh, the things easier let's do that uh, I will use this random fog texture and I will decrease particle size and the remove the lifetime random and restore the original lifetime so that the our effect will look simpler so with basic settings when you just create a particle uh, normally it will not have this has vertex colors property so I will disable it for now and I will show you later what it does now let's only talk about this knee material property here you can see uh, different properties but with particles we will only use this emissive color because the other properties do nothing on particles for example the alpha value uh, determines the opacity or transparency of the uh, mesh if a mesh has this knee material property also this alpha value does uh, different things if you use different alpha flags here and uh, the glassiness doesn't work as I know in Morrowind and uh, in, with particles this ambient diffuse and peculiar color doesn't work but it works on meshes so you usually play with all of these color values this flag is not important and you can set a color controller too I will show that uh, later on so again only the emissive color works and what it does is to make things appear brighter than their surroundings uh, like they emit light um, so if we have a completely wh white emissive color it makes our meshes or particles like they glow in a whitish color as you see there is no sunshine and everything is dark but these particles are very shiny and if I remove this emissive color uh, by changing it to black then you will see that it is actually kind of bluish because there is an ambient light with this bluish color uh, so that the night in the game uh, casts this bluish color on every material like the ground and the hills and the trees and yes it is important that all light that are present uh, affect the color of the particles so when I equip this torch and move closer to the particles you can see that the torch lights up the particles and uh, yes so the other color colors really don't do anything like if I change this to red it doesn't matter but what is important that if the particle or mesh has 
the emissive color, then the light objects in the surroundings will not affect the particles. So let me just uh, save this again and it's bright again and if I move closer to it with this torch they are not uh, affected by the, the light of the torch because they have emissive color now you can add controller to the new material property by clicking on it and add new material color controller and save it first to see all properties and it has a flag it's similar to the flag in other animation nodes like the particle system controller flag like it has cycle or only repeat once uh, version and here it's the same so check active and cycle or uh, only once but we will use cycle and you can set the target color which is emissive because in with particles only emissive color works and accept and you have to uh, first set the frequency so it plays in normal speed set the phase to zero so it starts at zero and uh, start and stop time should be the same as the animation time of this uh, but you can set any kind of animation time you want so let's uh, oops uh, set 10 seconds and you have to create a data that this color controller uses and here you can set how many changes will you want in your animation like now we will have four changes of color during 10 seconds so refresh and it uh, needs a kind of interpolation but always select the linear key because only that can be edited uh, properly manually but maybe things that are exported from other program will have quadratic or tbc key or other but so let's just have linear key and refresh again and you will have four keys each key have a time and a color value and these color values are in RGB so red, green and blue I'm not sure if it's in this order but let's try it out so I want an animation where at the start and at the end there is no emissive color so 10 second I end at 0 second I leave everything at 0 and let's say at let's make it 5 keys and uh, actually and so let's at 2.5 second I want red color at 5 second I want blue color and at 7.5 second I want a green color and if I have uh, this material color controller then it won't matter what kind of uh, color I have set in this emissive pro uh, color property because 
this value is controlled by this material color controller so save it and see how it looks As you see the transition is quite smooth uh, between colors but it is important that uh, this kind of uh, color change is independent of the particle system controller so it is an independent property controller and we cannot have too many cool effects because it changes the color of all of the particles at the same time but still it can be quite cool sometimes like if we change the frequency of the animation of the color controller we can have effects like this here Now I will remove this material color controller from the material property by just unlinking them. So the controller will remain here but it won't affect anything. And now I want to show you the other color property the particles can have next to the material property so this other property is in the, the particle system controller node under here it should have a name but it's not important and you can set any color you want let's set a bluish purple and save it and it will not do anything because of two reasons so one of the reasons that this particle color doesn't show up in game is that to use it you have to go to particle data and you have to check has vertex colors to yes and after that click refresh or right click on this and array update and after that you can click on this drop down menu and you will see actually 500 of these vertex color entries it is 500 because we have 500 particles and in theory, theory you could set the color of each particles one by one so like the first particle is red second is white third is purple and so on but actually this doesn't do anything at all and only thing that matters is that you check this to yes and in and after that the, cal the all particles should use this color but if we save it now we will see that the color is still not working and that is because of um, the second problem and the second reason that the particles are not using this color is that if the particles have a material property and in that an emissive color then this emissive color is overwriting this color actually so if you want your particles to use only this color then you have to remove the emissive color completely to so change it to black and if we see the result now then we can see the particles are using that nice true strong purple color and no white parts and if I increase the emissive color back just a little bit you can see that 
it is already strongly becoming white again and uh, you can also just remove the material property because you won't need it from now on by just remove it from here and so it's the same and actually you notice that particles are less visible now because it don't have this emissive color like if I decrease the size then they are barely visible because they are not overlapping each other and uh, so we cannot use material properties emissive color to increase the brightness of the particles but later on I will show uh, ad additional tricks how to make uh, even small particles with this particle color property to make uh, more visible and more bright but that, that will be later and actually this is the proper way to change the particles color because if we did it with emissive color in new material property like if we set the emissive color to purple then the color change would be would uh, only be slightly visible and it's not very effective because most parts of the uh, particles will be would be too bright and white so let's compare the these two particle color modifiers so currently the particles are using the color here but if we disable it here and change the emissive color to the same color you can see that it basically not very visible and the color on is only visible at the edges of the particles when they are not overlapping and uh, so it's you cannot really use this emissive color to change the particles color and again if I change the other colors they do nothing so from now on I will uh, set the emissive color to black again and uh, what comes next is my favorite modifier and to show that let's simplify and change the effect a little by removing the color controller uh, by unlinking it and remove the particle growth fade and change the texture to this it has more uh, white parts in it so it's more visible and again I want you to remember that this color only comes from the particle color here in the particle system controller and the texture that I use is completely white and what's amazing is that there is another color controller that you can apply to this particle color here so earlier I used this new material color controller and this changed the value of the emissive color in the material property and this color controller is actually an independent controller because it is outside of the particle system controller so it this changes the color of 
all the particles at once but the color controller that I will show you now for this particle color is actually a controller inside the particle system so it dynamically changes the particle colors as you will see um, you can add it the same way as any other particle modifier as we have already a particle modifier here linked in particle extra so we have to add the new modifier after the gravity as it is a chain of modifiers and uh, to add this color modifier you have to add this new particle color modifier and first save it to see this controller value and type here the particle system controller number and you have to click um, to add the color data similar to similar to what we did with the material color controller and you have uh, to type in the number of keys again and same interpolation and here are the keys but um, these values are a little different than the color modifiers here as you remember these were RGB numbers but here you can click and select the color so it's easier and again to make the knee particle color modifier work you have to change the emissive color to black in knee material property and also you can just delete the knee material property because it's not needed now so we can do that by uh, removing it from the properties of the particle node like the, there are the properties and just remove it from there and also to make this particle color modifier work we have to change this has vertex colors to yes this particle color modifier is different than the material color controller because here you have start and stop time and phase and frequency but in particle color modifier there is only the color data property and this difference is because as I told earlier the material color controller is an outside independent controller and it needs to be given the its, its own animation values but this knee particle color modifier uh, gets it gets the animation values from the particle system controller so here it uses the animation time and the particle lifetime as you will see the time values work differently here this is a dynamic controller and it works similar to the particle growth fade modifier which we used earlier by dynamic I mean that these time values uh, are applying to each particle individually from particle burst to particle death and not to the whole animation time so it, it like applies to the particle lifetime instead so the these values are not in seconds instead it ranges from 0 to 1 and 0 means particle birth 1 means particle death so if I change the last key to 1 and change the color to red then the particles 
will start as white at birth and will gradually change into red like this oops and if I change the last color to black then it will the particles will gradually disappear and it is a super effective tool to smoothly fade out particles uh, vanilla effects only use the particle growth fade modifier to fade out particles but this modifier only changes their size but they are still strongly visible and it looks kind of uh, bad but this is a much better way to fade out particles as I will show later in some examples and of course we can play with the colors so let's give time values to the remaining keys and change the colors to the color of the rainbow uh, And you see the colors are pretty strong and they are changing smooth and nice and you can have all kinds of fun th things with this if you change the particle lifetime add particle lifetime random speed random and starting direction random Alright, there is another thing that I want to show here. Mm, a lot of times it is a problem with particles that they are not bright enough, especially at night, uh, while at daylight they are actually too bright. And this is mostly the problem if particles are placed in the world, as with the spell effects. Uh, particles are naturally brighter mm, by a, this is mm, caused by a game setting so let's say if I decrease the particle size to 10 you will see that as the particles are not overlapping each other they are there but hardly visible and if I use this same NIF file as a spell effect, these particles would be much brighter actually. So we want to make particles brighter and as I showed earlier, uh, I cannot use emissive color in material property as that, as, uh, that overrides the particle color. Uh, so to make particles brighter there is a cool property and it's called directional light and you have to add it in a different way than other properties so you do not add uh, it in properties or children or other place uh, to add directional light you have to click on the node to which you want to add it and if you add it to it then all of its children will be affected by the light effect so to add it first you have to go down here uh, it is uh, the properties of this node and under here there is number of effects and you have to add one refresh and here click the symbol and you see there is need directional light now there are these other lights like ambient and point and spotlight but I do not recommend using them because 
they are either buggy or do the same effect as directional light but in a buggy way or you cannot use controllers on it or they show differently with uh, different graphics settings like pixel per lightning mode shows spotlight or point light uh, differently sometimes so but this new directional light is pretty solid uh, and uh, always works so click on it and it is really important that after you edit this new directional light to the node to make this work you have to add it to the children as well afterwards if you do not do this it will won't do anything so it's important that the unidirectional light should be also in effects and in children and you have to save first to see all of its properties from these properties you will only need to change a few dimmer stands for, for uh, light strength as you see it is now zero so it should not change anything but if you change it to like 10 then particles are much more visible if we change it to 1 they are only little more visible and you can increase it to 100 or a 1000 but mostly 100 is enough for maximum effect and the for the color you will only need to change the ambient color maybe there are some flags to change this behavior but with this basic setting you will only need to change ambient color which is enough now let me change back the light strength and change the particle colors so we can demonstrate the light effect easier so I moved in the particle color modifier and in particle data I will set most keys to black except in the middle where I will set it to white like this and I will increase the particle size a little back to 60 So as you see, particles in the beginning and the end are black, completely. Now before moving on I want to show you quickly something to keep in mind. So when we choose a color for our particles here, in particle system controller, when we choose it, we usually see only this color choosing panel, but actually there is this slider here which is not present when we choose a color for a simple material as you see there is only RGB values but in particle system controller there is this uh, fourth value which I guess stands for some ambient color value it, it is also 1 or 0 and uh, it uh, should always be one if you use standard colors but actually there is one way I should mention uh, so these are black colors but with ambient also zero and uh, 
it is now like this as you see particles are not visible at the beginning at the end and if I change the ambient value to 1 everywhere it is still black color but with ambient value 1 the particles will behave still the same basically maybe this uh, part is a little longer now but still they are the particles are still visible which is good but if I increase the emissive color uh, random color like green then it will completely overwrite all particle color values uh, here but if I change the ambient value to zero and keep the color as black then it will actually work even with emissive color because as you see particles have emissive colors but the particle color are particle color is also working as the particles are completely invisible at the beginning at the end but uh, this trick only works for uh, black particle colors because uh, if I let me remove this uh, emissive color so because let's say the middle part is now red but if I change the uh, ambient to zero then it will still be black and invisible in game so it only it's only good for black and uh, white particles but we I, I never use this I just wanted to mention that there is this fourth value under the particle color so now let's go back to the directional light and add some brightness to it and change the color like to yellow and it's very effective color changer it's same as the material properties emissive color but it's uh, much uh, more easy to use and as it doesn't overwrite the particle color here and if you want invisible particles and color colored particles at the same time you can do that easily and you can add color controller to that also so to add the controller you have to click on the symbol and the light color controller and first save it to see all properties nice now it also has flags like other controllers but it's not really intuitive to figure out what values work here uh, basically we will change the ambient color only and the flag for that is this magic 56 number which is in cycle mode or there is 58 or the sorry uh, clamp so these three flags work here let's use cycle now set frequency to, n to 1 and start and stop time then you have to add similar data as in the material color controller so add some keys here interpolation always linear as you can only edit that edit uh, that properly manually so these are RGB 
values and time values in seconds so it's easy to change them and let's start with zero light then red light green light and blue light and these time values and it should work now and as you see again the if you use a color controller for your directional light then the color color color, color controller values are overwriting the value that you have given here so only these matter and I guess uh, I should mention that there is this reverse key so the cycle key uh, how it works is that it starts from the first key and uh, this should be zero it starts from the first key moves through the keys to the last and after the last it starts again from the first and it repeats the, the cycle and so the first and last values in cycle flag should be the same so it's a nice looped animation but if I use reverse key then the animation will use the keys like it starts from the first and moves to the last then from the last it moves back to the first and it repeats like that so let's uh, reduce the number of keys and change the animation duration so it should be it the animation will start at no light it will change to red light then green light then it will change back to red light and no light <coughs> uh, so it started red light green light back to red light and no light so here the first and last keys doesn't have to be the same and maybe it's easier to make uh, animation keys manually <coughs> now I want to go back to the fog effects for a while so I can show these new color and light and other properties again in some more interesting ex examples I have created some sample files for various uses you will have these two ready to use among the other downloaded files so the first thing that I want to show you that is that it is really easy to create a smooth uh, not too bright fog effect uh, much easier so let me open this one first uh, and save it over the one that I'm using so this is a basic fog effect it's uh, not too dark not too bright looks nice and what I want to show you is how to easily set the proper brightness of the fog so this these particles are using this texture which is completely white in the middle and uh, with the default settings if you just created a particle with the default settings this fog would be completely white and you couldn't see through it so it couldn't be really useful and what I want to show you is how to set that brightness without changing the 
texture brightness so earlier I just decreased the alpha and RGB opacity of the texture to decrease the visibility of the particles but actually it's much easier so you see material property all is black and in the and the particles have vertex color setting to yes and in the particle color I have set a color which is almost black as you see but it is not it is almost black but it is the color that you actually need to have a fog like this for example if I change the particle color to white then you see the particles are completely useless and uh, it is really hard to decrease the brightness by any other means so this is the best way and you, you actually need always to set a color really close to black so if I change it back you see it is now much less visible and you can decrease it even uh, down by editing the numbers and it is now almost really hard to see but it is still there and you can easily set uh, colors this way let me change back the brightness a little and so this would be if you move the point to this side this is the color side and if I have want a red fog and choose this uh, red with a lot of white in it then it is too red and again if I just want a nice hard to see uh, fog but with red color I also I, I have to select a red color but uh, really close to completely black so as you see it is now nice and it works with all colors and it's still near black I can decrease it further The next that I want to show is this yellow fog. Um, so it is the same f white fog that I showed last time, but only thing that is changed is the particle alpha flag. Uh, and the particle color and what I want to show here is that in daylight it is visible but at night when there are no ambient lights around then it is not visible it disappears and it is because of the alpha flag it works this way uh, like if I change it back to 13 the basic flag then you see it's still visible at night but with this flag it is not and it is easy to make it visible at night by adding a directional light or setting an emissive color with the same color so but again with emissive color works the same way so you have to pick a really dark color so if I pick uh, this uh, true yellow color then particles will be too bright but if I change it to really dark then it will be nice actually let me decrease it even below yes 
so it's visible still. Actually, this is a kind of nice effect, and I will probably use it for a night eye vision spell because if you are in it, then everything becomes visible. Like now, all textures are, are dark and hard to see, but if you stand in it, then everything becomes visible and it's I think it can be used nicely for night eye vision if I place these uh, particles on the character during the spell effect so it's pretty nice I think there is this other white fog file and I want to show with this that you can cover a pretty big area with fog with only 500 particles so it's relatively low number uh, compared to the area of the fog so I'm standing far from it and it's still only 500 particles and it's it looks like a nice spooky fog effect and uh, it has the same quality as if the fog would cover a lesser area the next that I want to show is that if you use a texture with like this which has already a lot of dots or stars in it and apply it to a texture then you can actually make the particles look like they are there are much more particles but in a fake way so I applied this uh, star texture to the particles and it's still only 500 particles but it looks like it's 5 million or something and it's quite good only thing that is important is that you should only use uh, dot particles because texture with with, uh, with which has a length on any axis then they will look strange because when you are standing inside the textures and look around the textures will rotate like a billboard node so it is only recommended to use uh, textures like this but for these textures it is kind of nice and with this trick you can create a pretty realistic and nice falling snow effect it is really dense but it is still only 500 particles I'm not sure if it will show up uh, it will be visible in the video but the particles look as they should be because at night the, pa the snow shouldn't be shiny or emit light the particles do not have emissive color or do not have any light applied to them so they are hardly visible and I think it, sh it looks realistic but if I cast a light spell uh, then the light will shine up the snow particles pretty nicely and it makes it even more realistic I think it's really nice but again you can apply uh, 
any safe color or light pretty easily to it if you want to make it brighter uh, let me try a stronger light here and again in daylight it will look brighter as it should maybe it's too dense but it is easy to reduce that this next will be a um, red fog and with this I want to show that uh, so this is a uh, red fog which uh, is really dark in the middle and it is because of the alpha flag only it still uses this white texture and uh, this is actually the inverting alpha flag and what I want to show is that I made that uh, dark red fog with this alpha flag which inverts the colors and white texture and the particle color is actually blue really dark blue but as it inverts the color it will show up as red so you have you can do it the, this way and it is really nice and uh, if I change the alpha flag to the the one that I used earlier then you see it's blue and if I change it to the inverted color uh, actually this panel is nice because you can see the inverted version of each color it, it, it is the opposite side so the, the inverted color of this blue will be this orangish red and you will see that we have a red fog and you can compare this red fog with the one earlier as you can see that this fog makes things brighter and the previous red fog made everything darker Uh, this one will be again with made with the inverted alpha flag but I just want to show that it is kind of cool that if you are in it it acts like a green color filter as if you see through it then you will only see different shades of green color so it's kind of cool and the other green fog here uh, here I just want to show that you can apply different textures to it so like this looks like a poison uh, toxic fume or toxic cloud like in you can place it inside the sewers or some place now there is an important property that I want to show it is the fog property what it does is it sets how the particles look inside the uh, fog weather so not my fog effects uh, I mean foggy weather in game because sometimes uh, particles or meshes with uh, cer certain alpha flags can look uh, fucked up or strange so with the nifog property the particles look like this as you see it is an ash storm with fog and my fog effect looks proper um, I mean 
it is OK. And if I remove the nifog property, you will see that everything shows wrong, and it is only because the alpha flag I use, for example, with the basic alpha flag, it is not happening. But sometimes I have to use alpha flags like this, and nifog property fixes that, so we can just re-edit easily with the same settings and it will be fixed now. So uh, basically I just copy this property to every particle effect I use because it doesn't do any harm, it only fixes this problem. And here you will find the black fog effects mm, that I made. Uh, there are two ways to create a black fog. And the first is the inverting alpha flag with uh, using any kind of textures like this. And set a really dark color without uh, any color, only the black. So it's like this. Works really nice. And the other way that you can create uh, black fog is that is the is a different alpha flag, which is this one but uh, this changes every color to black and with this alpha flag you cannot use particle color or other settings to make the fog like less visible the only way is to use a texture with much lesser visibility like i cannot use this texture texture with that alpha flag I had to decrease the opacity of the texture and it has 5000 particles for example oops uh, so you can test if it gives you performance problems or anything like you see it covers a pretty wide area it shouldn't be this tall, uh, you could cover the whole town here with the 5000 particles and you can create, uh, you can make it much uh, denser by increasing the texture opacity and I never experienced any performance problem with it so it's cool that you can cast the whole area under any uh, effect you want the next thing that I want to show is that with these fog particles you can not only make fog effects instead if you choose the right texture you can create effects like this arcane effect uh, here it's like a magical field total different effect but it's kind of cool and there aren't, there aren't any visual glitches except one which is if you look from above this is how they look but normally a player doesn't walk around with uh, this viewpoint so angle of view so it's okay i think uh, well you can try using uh, so this texture was a vertical texture and this kind of effect works best with the vertical texture but 
Let me show what happens if I use that horizontal texture. So it's like this. Uh, it's not that good because it's more noticeable when the player turns around that the particles are turning with him, with him. But still, uh, this is how it is. Mm, the next one is interesting because it uses a texture which has different RGB channels and different alpha flag as you see here and if you use a certain certain alpha flag for the particles it will create an interesting effect like this uh, as you see the alpha part of the texture which is only a line is shown in black lines lines and the white parts which are the RGB channels are showing between the black lines and it creates this uh, effect You will find here these animated Bifrost files and they are the same as this Arcane, they are using the same texture and settings, only I applied a particle color modifier and it looks quite cool as the particles are slowly changing color and these are these uh, well, vertical textures and you can set how strong the color is by applying uh, light or emissive color or increase the particle color to more intense color and there is this uh, other version which is different alpha value and different colors it looks like uh, northern light it's also nice Now the remaining uh, ones here are just interesting examples for applying different controllers for specific properties. For example, this animated red fog is using a special alpha flag which works like it is completely black without emissive color and if it has emissive color then it will be uh, really colorful as you will see here I set red emissive color And if I set, for example, green, then it will be green. So it's nice. This animated color is just a 
particle color modifier again with this alpha flag and it looks like this and the animated black uh, is This is just an example that uh, even you can make black fog to increase uh, gradually in density. Let me show it again. It seems that there are never-ending number of new properties to show. Uh, now I will show you texture effect, which is really unique and can be used for cool things also. I cannot say the definition of texture effect, I can just show you how it works and how to edit in NIFScope. It is pretty tricky to edit to particles so you can you have to just uh, follow these steps in this case I will use this white fog uh, effect to demonstrate the texture effect so the first thing that we have to do to do is create a containing node for the texture effect to do that click anywhere right click and insert an empty node and we have to manually place it uh, where we want. In this case, this NBS animation node contains all our particle stuff, so I will put it under there. So add one more children and put it there. And I will name this texture effect container and now I have to add the texture effect by insert and texture effect and again I have to manually put it to its children now it is there and to see all its properties I have to save first um, there are a lot of properties here, but I will tell what they do later. First, just add a source texture here. And I will use uh, this void one. And so we have the texture effect here, and we want it to apply on the particle and to do that it is kind of tricky as we have to apply it both to the particle node and mm, both to the emitter node and it on we can only add it to nodes we have which have uh, this effect property so first add it to the particle node by adding one effect and entering the texture effect number then add it to the emitter node the same way and we have to do a pretty random additional step I do not know the reason why it is, but this is the only way that the texture effect works on particles. So what we have to do is add a, a neatly shape or a mesh under the emitter node and only then the game will recognize that it should apply a texture effect on the particles so right right click insert and 
neat reshape which is basically a simple mesh without any data so we have to add it manually and we have to add neat reshape data neat reshape data and if we did everything right then we should see what the texture effect does so we had that white fog and now the texture effect applied this uh, void uh, space texture and you see it behaves differently than the common uh, texturing property because the texture effect doesn't apply the texture directly to each particle instead it is this effect and there are ways to increase the opacity of the particles and to make the texture effect texture even more visible so I have a sample file for that uh, let me quickly change it to that you can check in the file what settings I used so you see it is a little different now now I'm not that professional in this texture effect area so I will just show what I experienced when I played around with the values so you won't have to waste time trying out because I think I have found the limits of this so what uh, is happening here is that I have just found this uh, random space texture and threw it on this texture effect with the setting of CG sphere map and what it does is that imagine a sphere around you and this texture is applied to two sides of this sphere and in the middle the texture is merged and stretched so currently the texture only looks nice and sharp from certain viewpoints as if I move around it you will see that the texture becomes stretched and more stretched and if I move more then it will be sharp and sharper again until it's, it looks nice again so it it is the opposite direction now and if I move in the particles you see it, it is kind of hard to see what is going on but there is a circle circle where the texture is stretched and I'm sure that it is possible to make this sphere texture effect looks look nice I th uh, you only have to create a pre-stretched texture in Photoshop or uh, any program which when you apply to this texture effect will have the right parts uh, stretched so uh, as a result it will look uh, sharp everywhere but I do not know how to do that so I hope that there will be some uh, who will try because it is a pretty nice thing and could uh, be used for a lot of nice stuff it is pretty interesting when you are in the fog as well and it would look even more cooler if the texture wasn't stretched but well this is it for now and here this 
texture effect sphere map with light in this I just wanted to show how the midirectional light with the color controller interacts with the texture effect so it is like this when there is light it removes the texture effect and only the particle color and texture will show I think it is good to know now look at the other properties the texture effect has so what is funny actually is that if you use this CG sphere map uh, mode that we use now none of the other properties do anything for example the scale should be good for rescaling the texture but in this mode it doesn't do anything so the only way to change the scale is, is to change the resolution of the texture itself as you see there are various settings to change how the texture effect should work but only a few of these work actually because for example there are a lot of uh, different ways how the texture is projected and in what way but for example this CG world perspective is really cool but the graphics extenders pixel per lightning mode doesn't support it so I will not show it and uh, the remaining properties are also either not working or not supported in certain graphics settings so I will only show those that are working actually and uh, luckily next to this CG sphere map there is another use of the texture effect which is much better better and this is this uh, parallel parallel mode to show what the parallel mode does I have made a sample file so you can easily see what is going on and in the first one I will use this test uh, texture as it has only a narrow line of white part in each direction so with that I can easily demonstrate how it works and what it does okay so as you see this texture that I had is projected through the particles and the particles are only showing up where the texture effect uh, has uh, white parts in parallel mode the other properties of the texture effect are actually working not like in the sp CG sphere map and it is really important what values you use here because I did a lot of testing and it required a lot of tricks to make this parallel mode work so first you have to use a really big scale number because if you use the default one value mm, you will see nothing and actually it is visible but so the texture is scaled into insanely 
small scaled down and if you use a bigger number like 100 which is already pretty big then you see the lines are getting wider and if you use this uh, number close to a thousand that then the texture is about the same has the same ratio as it has in the original uh, texture and uh, there is this translation value which if you which you can move the texture in <coughs> the given on the given axis so as you see the middle of the cross is moving actually I will use the scale of 300 as with that uh, the texture effect is the most sharp and close to the real texture and now there is this texture clamping which sets if the texture is repeated or not the clamp means that it is not repeated and wrap means that it is repeated S and T is just let's say S is the X axis and T is the Y axis so if I set clamp, clamp S wrap T then it will mean that it the texture is only repeated in the T direction or one axis as you see now if I uh, reduce the scale even below this repeating is more visible and the other setting uh, it's the opposite so now it is repeated in this direction and if I save it you will see that it is repeated in the opposite direction and you can set to both axes and it will look like this and as you see it is uh, it will need uh, some tricks to find the right texture because from certain view angles it will not it will show strange things but i will show more examples later now i will show what happens if i use a low scale value uh, it is uh, easy to see what is happening because we are using that uh, cross texture which is scaled down to really low and with this repeating mode it looks like this and if you would use a, an ordinary texture you would only see the white fog or completely uh, messy fog and you would think that this uh, texture effect is not working properly but it does you only need to increase the size and it's important that this uh, clamping uh, mode which doesn't repeat the texture uh, I want to show how it works so I will change the texture to this one which uh, has a cross in a different direction in the middle and the same 
uh, lines at the edge of the texture and you can see that with the clamp mode when the texture ends the last pixels will, uh, will be repeated uh, infinitely so now you see these long lines but actually that is only these parts of the texture repeated forever in those directions and it's nice that it is the, it's uh, in a way like this uh, it works with uh, every scale setting and you can give uh, rotation to the projection direction of the texture effect either here or in the model projection matrix it's the same result so if I give it some random value then you will see that the particle that the projection is looking this way now uh, and now it will be horizontal and it will look bad from above some tricks are needed to make this texture effect work so as you see the original fog particle textures are completely invisible while the texture effect is really strong in visibility and to do this I needed uh, th two things the first is that I needed this texture for the particles this has completely black RGB channels and an alpha alpha channel like this where the middle is completely white and it is fading out to black and this is applied to the particles and uh, next to this I used completely zero material property color and for the particle color I used completely black particle color and only changed the value of this ambient as if I increase it to one you will see that the the texture effect is much more stronger it's super white uh, you see this uh, rotation for two reasons one is that I only use 500 particles so you see the projection in each particles more and the second is that with the vertical and the texture vertical textures with which contain only one line this will be visible but with most textures it will not be a problem so if you want to change the visibility of this texture effect it is easy you only need to change this ambient value as if it is zero then everything is completely invisib invisible if you give it a little value the texture effect will start to appear and if you e increase it further uh, 
you see it's increasing in visibility so it's easy to set the proper value you want in this next sample file you can see that you can apply keyframe controller to the texture effects translation rotation and scale values so you can rotate and scale it over time and move it or move the texture effect projection and uh, to add uh, the keyframe controller right click and insert keyframe controller and when you have added it just link it here and add the keyframe data set the stop and the store start time and added the keys there are rotation and translation and skill keys and this is how it is working So yeah, this texture effect with parallel projection it has insane amount of different uses. Uh, you only need some imagination. For example, I have made some sample files so you can imagine it easier, what uh, uses it has. So for example, if I use this texture for the texture effect then this is the result and it looks actually like uh, temple window light projection like the light is shining through the temple colored window and it look like looks like this but basically any texture you apply to this will look cool so let me try out some other random textures like uh, there is this uh, texture that uh, looks like the sun it's too big now so I will reduce its size or you can create a um, circular fog effect with this kind of texture I mean it is a circle of fog which is pretty cool you couldn't do this in other ways and yeah you can animate it decrease or increase its size and if I change the texture to like this and I can decrease the size that's too small uh, Yeah, make it so it is repeating. It's like this. Or I can apply um, this texture.
for example, there is this file which at first looks like this. I have just uh, decreased the, the particle starting random z direction and decreased the particle size so it's not a big fog effect and it uh, looks like this from this uh, perspective but if you look at it from above you can see it's a summoning ritual mark on the ground so it's pretty cool and you can apply any kind of texture here like uh, I replace it with this uh, IC version of the texture it looks like this I can decrease its size again Uh, now there will be example files where I use the texture effect in a different way because I turned the rotated the projection angle by 90 degrees so the projection is not on the z-axis instead it is horizontal or I mean parallel to the ground and you can do cool things with that as well for example I use the texture like uh, I will show you which uh, I created this quickly in Photoshop it is only a black texture with some color at the bottom and you can apply that direct directly to the fog and it looks like this so you can create fog effects which change in color or in uh, density as it move upwards so I think it's it also has a lot of uses and uh, I have made a similar texture to that it's a little bit more extreme but uh, it's also fun as if I animate the texture effect to move on the z-axis then it looks like this and I have replaced the fog texture to something different and it's the same file but with a rotated projection so you can walk in it and see how it looks from the inside it's pretty interesting as well actually there is one more important thing that I want to show so we have this uh, summoning mark here and let's say I want to rotate it so rotate the texture effect so add the, the keyframe controller first and link it to the texture effect then save first so we see all the controller properties and link the texture effect in the controller then add keyframe data then set the animation time and flag then add three rotate keys and set rotate type linear 
refresh the keys and we have to save again to see them so to make a full 360 degree rotation we can only do that with the three keys uh, there must be one key in the middle the first should be zero on the z-axis the second should be 180 degrees and the third should be uh, the f full rotation and this way the rotation will be continuous so it should work in game now uh, let me increase the frequency so we see what is happening as you see the center of the rotation is not at the center of the texture so we have to do something about it now if we use this translation here then actually it only shifts the whole thing along the different axis is so this is not the solution we will find the solution in this model projection transform value and uh, it is different than this translation because these are in length units or what is it I do not know but this model projection transform is not in the same units as this translation instead it is uh, because if you type in one here it means that the whole projection will be shifted on the x axis by the whole x dimension length of the texture itself so if I type in one here it will mean that the texture will be shifted by its own width in the given axis and uh, with default settings the rotation axis is placed on the corner of the texture so if we want to move the rotation axis to the middle of the texture then we will have to shift the projection by half unit in the x and y direction uh, yes yeah, so it is fixed now Now comes the last property for particles, which is the collider. And to show that, I will use this uh, snow effect and change a little to demonstrate it easier. So I will change the texture first to a simple dot then reduce the particle size to 5 and increase the particle number to 5000 Increase the emit rate as well. Then add quickly a color controller 
so we don't see the particles at the start uh, color modifier and save Okay, first will be planar collider, which is a plane, and when particles are colliding with it, they are either bouncing off from it or get stuck on it. Uh, to add the colliders, you do not uh, edit as we added the other controllers for particles, so not in particle extra or not after the last uh, modifier the particles have instead you have to link in under particle extra in this unknown link whatever its name is to add it you just select the planner collider and save it to see all its properties then link the controller back uh, it's eight. with the default values our collider plane will look like this because if you give not proper values to certain properties then the plane will be just infinite and in the default position so let's give all these properties the right values so normal is the normal vector of the plane so it determines the orientation or rotation of the plane so we want to face it upwards so z vector is 1 and the rest is 0 and these values are good for determining the shape of the collider plane in most cases you will want your plane to be an even sided square with 90 degrees between its sides and the this red arrow is the normal vector of the plane so the plane is facing in the z direction and to make this uh, kind of plane you have to give these values to the these uh, vectors as in this case the x axis is actually uh, a vector which has one unit in the x direction and the y axis is uh, only one unit in the y direction but if you want your collider plane to uh, look like a transformed uh, rectangle like this uh, then you will have to give these uh, values, uh, vectors, different values but I will show some examples for that let's give values to the height and width value so this will be a rectangle with uh, where the sides have 1 to 2 ratio and if we save it it will still not work and the game will treat it as an infinite plane because there are some settings which the game doesn't like so there is this position which should be the coordinate of the center of the rectangle based or measured from the emitter of the particle 
but uh, if it is uh, set at zero and it means that the plane is actually uh, crossing or containing the emitter point then it will be buggy so we have to move the plane away from the emitter uh, normally if I wanted to move away the planar collider from the emitter node to make it work properly I would only need to edit the position uh, so move the plane below the emitter by for example this much so and it, it should work but if we save it still doesn't work and uh, that is because we need to edit another uh, value and it is this uh, constant value down here now I have to say here that to edit planar colliders in leaf scope it is actually hard and sometimes not really possible if you want to make complicated things with multiple colliders and the easiest way should be to create particles in 3ds max add colliders there when you can see uh, how the collider planes look and export them and when you export them there will be these random constant values which will look like this and will be impossible to edit by hand or figure out the right value you should give here but it is really important and it will look this random number it will be a random number if the plane is rotated so not looking upwards or transformed or it has difficult properties but if the plane is looking in the z-axis and it is a simple like this then what makes it work is if you give the same uh, value to the constant as the z position of the of the center of the plane so if we save now it then it should work actually so this constant value is a really tricky property and hard to use and I do not actually know what it is supposed to do and if it is working properly or it is bugged. Uh, for example, if I type here minus 200, then the game will treat this plane with these settings uh, bugged and it will show an infinite plane instead of that uh, small plane which we have given these sides side values and uh, so let me change it back uh, and I have given the this particle color modifier so you can only see the particles which are colliding but if I remove the starting uh, fade effect and restore the particles to white at the start then you will see this and you can see that below the collider the particles cannot pass through and if I change the uh, sides of the plane it will be a square now only Now I will transform this rectangle so that the angles between its sides are not always 90 degrees 
and to do this transform I will change the vectors here I do not know the mathematical background of this transform but in this way the resul result will be this and for example if I want to stretch the rectangle in the opposite way then I have to give these negative values and I can actually um, add multiple colliders to the same particle it is easy just right click on this collider and copy, do not click copy branch and as it will be resulting in an error so just copy and paste and add uh, this 19 collider after this here and the controller is correct I think and I will change these vectors and now it is looking like a star but if you if you can use 3ds max then you can easily create more complicated or more useful colliders but so this was just an example now there is this bounce property and to show that I will change the particles again a little like restore the white color at the start again and change increase the speed and reduce the lifetime a little and increase the emit rate Now if I type 1 here in the bounce value then it will mean that particles hitting the collider plane will be reflected with the same speed as they arrived. As you see and if I type here 0 then it will mean the particles will not be reflected at all and if I type a middle value it will mean particles will be reflected by a slower speed half, half speed or even lower speed but the bounce value is the most useful if the particles have a wind gravity in the negative z direction instead of only a speed so I will change the speed to zero and add the particle gravity so you can see what I mean um, so z direction negative speed and set the controller and save so the bounce is really small now uh, compared to the gravity force so I will increase the bounce to 1 and in this case as you see the particles when reflected back are not going upwards infinitely instead the gravity pulls them back again for example I if I set a lower bounce then the particles will actually 
bounce on the plane maybe a little lower gravity force Also, you can achieve pretty nice effects if the collider plane is not facing upwards, instead it is rotated. So, I will remove this second collider and change the current one to a simple square, but with the rotated uh, normal vector and change back the bounce aha uh -huh, so as you see, this is our collider plane now, <clears throat> and if I give it a bounce of 1, then the particles will be strongly reflected in this direction, but if I give it a really low bounce, then the particles will be sliding off the plane. change back the color again I think I will reduce the rotation of the plane a little because it was too steep uh, maybe reduce it a little more even and uh, increase the bounce and as you see now some particles are bouncing off from it and some particles are <coughs> getting stuck on it and this is because if you give a bounce value below 1 then this that will mean that each time the particles bounce they lose speed until they have zero speed and they will just slide so if you see the particles that are sliding uh, before that they were bouncing actually so it's not a bug I think it is working properly but this never happens if you type in one here they will be always reflected back in most uses you will only need planar collider for simple things like create an infinite plane at ground level so particles are bouncing off from the ground or create planes for each side of a room so particles are reflected off from each wall of the room but there are other uses for example if you can use 3ds max uh, these are really basic things you can create waterfalls or any kind of uh, effect but uh, I have failed to do this so far because it is really 
sensitive when you create uh, planar colliders in 3ds max and rotate them or stretch th stretch them the exporter uh, exports wrong planes and the resulting effect in game looks look strange or doesn't work as I want but I am sure it is possible to create these things it just needs some more experimenting uh, so I hope someone will try to make uh, more use of this planner collider now let's move the collider to the ground level so actually this file is translated up by 500 units in this node and it is then moved up by a hundred again in the particle node so the emitter z coordinate is at 600 so if we want to move the collider to ground level we have to move it down by 600 units as you see now and it is actually still rotated and still small so let's change that and remove the bounce for now yes I will keep this planar collider and move over to the other collider which is spherical collider and it is much simpler simpler to use and doesn't have any weird behaviors and it is pretty cool as well to edit uh, we can do it similar way click on the particle system collider and edit in unknown link but as we have added this planar collider there we can edit afterwards so spherical collider and save to link the particle system controller and save it and there is a small bug with the spherical collider which I only experience sometimes and that is that uh, for example if you set bounce to zero on the planar collider then particles will get stuck on the plane forever but if you set the same zero bounce on the spherical collider then it will behave the particles will behave like uh, the collider stabs them at first but then they will start to move again if there is gravity affecting them so it looks like this as the particles are first stabbed on the spherical collider and then start to move again because there is wind gravity but if I actually remove the wind gravity and add the same speed to the particle then they will be stuck on the plane <coughs> as when they collide their speed their speed is reduced to zero and there is no gravity to increase their speed again and I don't know if it is intentional or a bug I know that I don't experience it always and again it can be cool if you set a low bounce number to the spherical collider as they will slowly slide off the sphere
and if you give that give it a big bounce value it will be like this and of course the collider works on both sides so if the particles are starting in the middle of the collider uh, let's do that you can achieve cool things as well so let's change the start random to a point and give it random starting direction here and remove the planar collider for now and only use this spherical collider and um, I think we should uh, reduce the position or move up the center of the spherical collider and I should re give actually speed to the particles maybe too big speed and restore the particle colors at the start to white so we see what is going on and change the bounce to lower number and increase the speed again In the tutorial files you will find this one which has one spherical and two planar colliders and looks like this and you can change the values and practice on it easily. Ok, uh, finally there aren't any more new properties for particle effects but there is something important which I haven't mentioned too much yet and it is movement controllers for the emitter of the particles so giving speed or gravity to the particles is nice uh, what we did so far but giving movement to the, to the particle emitter is just as important and it is super easy to give basic movement animation to the emitter only using NIFScope and uh, we, we will do this by using uh, multiple keyframe controllers applied to the emitter node for more complex and unique movements you will need to use external programs like 3ds Max where you can create and export uh, path controllers for example to show these I will use this particle color modifier sample file that I have showed earlier which looks like this now and I will remove the gravity and speed and make the color of the particles uh, black 
at the end and in the beginning as well I think um, I will just copy this so it will look like a dot now as I have told earlier, the particle system needs an emitter node and the particle system will use this node's coordinates so that the particles will be emitted from there. And if you apply a keyframe controller directly to this node, this will result in the movement of the particle em emission point. Uh, to add the keyframe controller, just right click and insert keyframe controller. But uh, I have showed this earlier in other examples. And we need to link the keyframe controller to this emitter node. So just uh, type the number of that node here. And First, we have to uh, save it um, because now we see the tar target and we have to link it to the node as well because if we don't do that, it will crash the game. Um, I have showed what these values do earlier and now I will just go over this quickly again. The flag sets how the animation will be played. If you use cycle, the animation will be looped and repeated forever. If you use reverse, it will be also cycled and repeated forever, but this uses the keyframe keys which you give in this data here later. The, re the reverse flag will use these keys these keys in a different way. Uh, I have showed example of this reverse key in some color controller earlier and the clamp makes the animation to play only once ideally but not always works but we will just create a looped animation and use the cycle flag. If you have multiple keyframe or other controllers in your NIF file and in your animation then you may use different start time so at the first five seconds nothing will happen but it is just uh, recommended to always use zero here and set the keys properly afterwards so now we have a 10 seconds animation the phase means that at which second will the animation start from from but we will leave this at zero again and frequency means how much times the animation will be played over this animation time and we have to give keyframe data that the keyframe controller will use and here you can give translation rotation and scale values which the usual node has but uh, for if you use keyframe controllers or the emitter node the scale scaling won't do anything only the rotation and uh, translation now let's say I want to make my particle emitter to move on the edge of a square over one second and for that I will only need translation keys actually five of them and 
I will use always linear key because that is the easiest to edit manually here in Nivscope. You cannot edit these other keys with much success. So I will set the timing of these keys uh, evenly. And actually I will change the animation time to one second. And I will set the translation values. So with this cycle flag, the first and last keyframe should be the same. If you use the big because this uh, cycle key will move from the first key to the last key one by one and after the last key it jumps back to the first and repeats again but if you use the reverse key which is the 10 flag then the keyframe controller will use the keys in a different way like starts from the first moves to the last and moves back to the first so to make that square first the particles will move in the x direction then from that point it will move on the y direction and from that point it will move back on the x direction so only the y value remains and after that it moves back to the starting point so it looks like this now uh, let me move the particles upwards a bit and if I change the phase uh, uh, sorry frequency so if I divide it by 10 it means that the animation will be 10 times as slow maybe it's too slow but if I increase it then you will see there is an uh, a limit to this increase as the time difference between each keyframe has a limit and this time difference shouldn't be lower than that so if I set the time for the second key to like uh, really small por small portion of uh, of a second it will not have any effect because the limit the minimal minimum difference is i think this value actually and the game and also the sniff scope rendering will only process changes higher than this time difference and if we increase the frequency then these time differences become smaller and smaller until they cannot be rendered and particles will look like mm, they are emitted from separate points rather than a square because the emitter is moving uh, too fast and the game can't render it as uh, now even if scope can show this that with frequency of 10 it is too fast and it can only show certain points and if we increase it even further it will be less and less points and if we restore the original frequency you can see it is still emitted from only points uh, but these points are actually satisfyingly close to each other and if we reduce it even then 
you can't even see differences between these points and as you increase the frequency you can see how it changes And if I restore the gravity effect next to this emitter movement controller, it can create cool stuff as well. Uh, now the gravity center is in, in the middle of the rectangle. Um, Yes, it will be now in the middle. And I can slow the movement a little down. And now I will play around with the frequency values just for fun. For example, if I increase the frequency to 500, which means that animation is sped up by 500 times, the result, the result is this, where the emission points point is split up to two points because the key keyframes are somehow synchronized in this way and for example if I take the half of this frequency it will be four points and again if I take half of that it will be eight points and so on now I will show the rotation keys and for that I will uh, delete these movement keys and uh, move the gravity center back to the center. Uh, yes, and first uh, remove the gravity because we don't need that for now so if you give rotation keys in the keyframe controller which target is the emitter node which the particle system uses these rotation keys will only change these keys this rotation value over time which determines in what direction will the particle move after they are emitted if they have initial speed because they do not have initial speed they are staying at a point but if I give them 300 speed for example you see the they are moving in this direction and if I change the this uh, rotation angle a little they will move in a different direction oh, that's strange let's give it a random value like that and it is actually this rotation is actually the same with the vertical and horizontal direction but you can animate this rotation over time so let's make that animation uh, I will move the particles 
hire a little first. Uh, so let's add three rotation keys because if I want to create a full 360 degree rotation three keys are needed only for that and we have to save first to expand these keys properly and as our animation time for this controller is one second I have to give these equal timing these keys and let's say we want to rotate around the z-axis so yes and if I give value to these rotation keys I mean if the node has a keyframe controller which has any number of rotation keys then these values in these rotation keys will overwrite this rotation properties values okay so to make a full circle rotation first you have to the second the first key should be zero the second key should be half uh, rotation I mean 180 degrees and the third should be uh, the full rotation and this will work uh, properly now I think as you saw the rotation wasn't what we planned because we wanted that the particles are emitted perpendicular to the rotation axis so they do a nice circle and to do that we actually need to edit the emit direction here in the particle system controller so uh, again if the vertical direction is at zero it will point at the z direction so we will not see any rotation now and as if we give value to the vertical direction the particles starting angle from the z-axis will be bigger and bigger and if we want the par particles to be starting uh, perpendicular to the z-axis uh, which is 90 degrees from the z-axis then we have to give uh, 90 degrees here in radian not in degrees uh, as these values are in radian so we know that uh, half rotation or 180 degrees is equals to pi p radian and if we want only 90 degrees we need half of this only so we have to type this value here for 90 degrees and as you see when I save the particles at first move in some random direction it is only because uh, the emitter node has different rotation than the first key in the rotation controller so if we don't want that we have to though it will it is only visible for a couple of moments but if we want to fix that then just copy the value of the first key to the node itself so it is the same uh, so it's all zeros 
and it will be now fixed. Well, maybe you will need some other animation flags or particle flags, not sure. And for example, the particles are now moving only in this horizontal plane. And if we want the emission direction to the emission angle to spread over a little, we can give value to this horizontal angle. Uh, so it looks like this. And even if we give 90 degrees, it will spread more. Now let's say I want to make an animation where the emitter is not only rotating around one axis, instead it has another rotation around a different axis with a different speed and different keys and how do we do that? Well now we already have a keyframe controller attached to the emitter node and that controller already has rotation keys and it would be hard or not possible to add the rotation around different axes so we need to add an additional keyframe controller with its own keys to the emitter node and there is one only one way to add this additional keyframe controller uh, first I will show you how it doesn't work and that is if you add a second controller after the first with its own keys then the effect of these controllers will not be combined only one of them will work so this is not the way and I will delete this but what we can do and what we have to do is put our current emitter node under an extra containing node and attach a controller to that parent node so let me show you what I mean I right click on the emitter node and attach parent node uh, which will be an e node and I can apply a controller to this parent node parent 1, I will name this parent 1 and for example I copy this current controller and apply it on this parent node as well then what will happen is that um, first the emitter node is rotated by this controller but since the emitter node itself is contained this in this parent node which is rotated by another controller this uh, emitter node will be actually affected by two keyframe controllers so we can do all kinds of combination of different movements for example if I change the rotation keys in the outside controller in for a different axis for example start at minus minus 30 degrees and change 60 degrees and return to minus 30 degrees it will result in this as you see the emitter is first 
rotated by its own controller to rotate around the z-axis but then the additional rotation is applied and with this method we can create all kinds of animation and movement um, for example now our emitter is rotating around itself I mean the rotation axis intersects the emitter point itself but we can move uh, move uh, away or offset the rotation axis uh, for example this is our emitter point and it is rotated around its itself by the keyframe controller but what we can do is before applying a keyframe controller to the emitter node we can offset the emitter node itself from the center of uh, the coordinate system like this is the zero zero point and we move the emitter away in some direction and in this case the x the rotation uh, will be around the the zero point and not around the emitter point so what we have to do is we have to offset the main emitter node either by changing the translation here for example to 200 units so it will be a circle of radius of 200 units or we can uh, use the translation keys in the direct control controller the closest controller of the emitter node so we can set the keys here as well and we have to apply the rotation to the outside controller not not the the closest controller because that will again be only a rotation around the emitter and not around the different axis so I will delete the rotation keys in the main controller and only the translation keys will remain and set the rotation keys in the outside uh, parent node controller uh, I will set the same full circle rotation now around the z-axis and uh, as our particles have speed now uh, I have to remove it so we will get a nice circle what we wanted and actually we can apply as many parent nodes with extra controllers as we want so there are infinite possibilities again so I will apply two additional uh, parent nodes here parent 2 and parent 3 then I will apply uh, keyframe controllers to these as well and make sure their targets are ok so currently we have four keyframe controllers so with all these controllers I can set any movement I want mm, first I will reset the keys of the two outside controllers because I only want to edit those later
and for example this is our main controller and now, now I will change the translation keys in a way that there is translation movement actually uh, like our particles will the emitter will move around a little then move back to from 300 to 600 uh, but as you see there is not much effect for example if I change the start to, uh, to zero it is actually a heart but what we can do is reduce the frequency of the main controller and we can see the and we can increase the rotation frequency so it's like this now maybe the frequency is too big so currently the emitter now is first uh, translated by the main controller then it is rotated around Z axis by the second controller and now we will add the third controller with rotation around the different axis and see what happens I will again have a full rotation but around Y axis I will move it a little the whole thing a little uh, above so above the ground and now I should uh, increase the lifetime of the particles to four times as much and change the color controller keys actually I will add a little more um, So now it will be more interesting, I hope. I will add the light quickly so the particles will be brighter uh, save 
four. And if we add the fourth controller or change the frequency of the controllers, we can have a total different effect again. I will add the third rotation. Um, with a different frequency and change the frequency of the first rotation as well Now, sadly, this random result wasn't too spectacular, but there are some examples you can do a uh, lot of fun things with these controllers. Uh, this I showed earlier, I think. Yes, and this, so if you, yes, this works by applying uh, Z axis wind gravity to it but there are a lot of possibilities so I will stop here and there is the path controller which is similar to the keyframe controller you can create movement and animation but you can only uh, create it in 3ds max or some other program I will show you quickly uh, an example but you will find uh, some other guide videos in Mr. Urchin's uh, videos in the note files so first in 3ds Max you just create a simple line randomly uh, which will be your path And um, you can move around the points. So it's a <coughs> 3D random movement, and you don't don't have to do any particles in 3ds Max. We will just export this path so I will just create a random mesh and attach this to the um, this path with this path constraint And as you see, the sphere moves around this uh, line, and we can export it easily with the test exporter. But you will find uh, a lot of info about this in Mr. Urchin's note files again. So when we open up the file that we just exported we will see that it coin contains this neatry shape which is the sphere and under the keyframe controller which is not necessary it contains the path controller which contains all these uh, keys which 
uh, makes up this uh, path and we only will need this path controller and we will uh, copy this whole thing first in our uh, particle file so we can use that mm, path controller so just paste it here and we can copy this to our emitter node um, but first I will delete all these unnecessary keyframe controllers so um, and delete them and here is our Nino, the emitter node and we can link the path controller to it by entering the node number of this path controller in the emitter node so now it is there and we will but we will remove <coughs> the path controller from the original node so we can delete it and we have to refresh the target of this path controller to the enter node and <coughs> so I did not save now and now the particles is this uh, older file with the keyframe controllers but if I save it the, pa the path controller will be applied to the particles but first we have to change the flag of the path controller to cycle because the clamp is frozen uh, as, as it, it is frozen with the other controllers if the, the sniff file is just spawned in the world so use cycle flag and <coughs> now it will work actually when we created this path in 3ds max we did not import any reference object like a uh, size of an npc so we don't know the size of this path and it resulted actually in it, it is too small now but we can easily increase the path size by uh, applying a scale to the container node of the emitter node so I applied the scale of 10 which makes the path controller 10 times as big and as you see it is showing now and this is the path that we created in 3ds max so if you made a path controller but you have problems with it it's nice that you don't have to recreate it in 3ds max and export instead you can modify it in NIFScope easily for example you can move the emitter translate it or rotate it or scale which is very useful but you can also <coughs> speed up the animation easily for example it looks like this now but if you think it is too fast you can just reduce the frequency so it will look like a snake maybe reduce it even below and you can change the timing, no <coughs> timing not only by editing the frequency instead 
you can set the stop time easily as well for example uh, we want the animation to be 10 seconds as our particle animation is also 10 seconds and we want them to match so we have to edit the stop time here and go to the knee float that data and set the time to 10 as well there because the position keys here will range from 1 to from 0 to 1 and from this and where 0 is the start of the animation and 1 is, is the end of the animation and the timing is set in this separate knee float data key so it's easy to edit and if we save and frequency is 1 you will see that it is slower again because it is now a 10 second animation and we can apply gravity to these and combine it with a lot of other properties for example if I quickly uh, re-enable the gravity for example uh, wind gravity in the z direction Okay, this is the last chapter and it is still about the emitter for particles. Uh, so far we use the Ninode as an emitter, so the particles emitted from only one point, uh, except when we set a start random in the particle system controller, so the particles were starting randomly from a uh, cube with the specified dimensions but you can set not only one point as an emitter instead you can assign a mesh as the emitter so the particle system will use the mesh's vertex point as emitters so for example we have this uh, Nitri shape exported from 3ds max and we can use this as an emitter for the particles so particles will emit from each of the vertexes of this shape and the particles will randomly uh, start from all of these uh, so I will show how to do this easily uh, for start I will use the this particle growth fade sample effect I showed earlier uh, which was this and currently the emitter is only this Ninode and the particles have uh, speed which I will reset now and it has gravity which I will also reset now so first you have to copy this nitri shape that you want to use as an emitter into the particle file I will paste it under the current emitter node and to make the particles to use this as the emitter we have to change the emitter target to the nitri shape node number which is 16 but it is not enough because to make this work some specific settings are required to do uh, the first is that 
we have to convert the me particle system controller into the me bsp array controller and as well we have to set the flag to 24 so we have to do these two things uh, apart from linking the tree shape as the emitter and this way it will work now as we see something happened I will move it above the ground a little and currently the tree shape is too small so I will want to increase its size normally I would only need to scale the tree shape to make it bigger and it makes it bigger but there is a bug that if you only scale up the tree shape the game will still use its original size uh, for the particle emitter so there are the particle particles are emitting inside the this neat tree shape but we do not see it properly because we have to add a uh, z-buffer property which fixes these uh, rendering problems so I will choose the NBS animation node and attach property z-buffer property with flag1 so just whenever you have these kinds of uh, rendering problems attach the buffer property with flag1 and we will see clearly what is happening so again we scaled up this nitri shape but the particle system controller uses actually the vertices which are contained in the Nitri shape data and these are unchanged currently and if we want to make this shape bigger we can do that by scale it up then right if you right click on the node and transform op apply then what it, one di what this will do is that it will apply this scaling to the vertices so that the particle system controller will uh, use the scaled object that we want so if I right click and transform apply you will see that the scale jumped back to, to 1 because the scaling has been applied to the vertices as you see there are 100 values but before there were only 20 values and if I save it you will see that the particles are correctly emitted from the vertices of this shape and what's cool is that you can use keyframe controller or even path controller uh, and apply to the Nitri shape. So, for example, I will make it now that the uh, Nitri shape is rotating. Um, so, to do that, I will quickly add the keyframe controller and link it to the Nitri shape. Save first and do the other link and add keyframe data add the cycle flag one frequency animation time 10 seconds and I will want some rotation keys um, save and now I can edit these and 
it will rotate around the Z axis again slowly. Maybe it's not the Z axis. And it is because our uh, emitter node was rotated before, so I rotate it back. And now it will rotate around the Z axis, but I can apply multiple controllers to this as well. And uh, But what is important is that only rotation and translation keys will work in the keyframe controller because the scaling only works if the vertices are scaled and we can only scale these vertices if we manually scale here and right click uh, and transform apply but we cannot do this uh, with the controller so only rotation and translation will work but these are enough because you can do fun things with this uh, as well but you can use any kind of nitri shape uh, mesh for your emitter there are no limits and I can think of a lot of insane cool uses uh, for it, but and it's really easy to do. For example, I will create a random text and use it as emitter real quick. Uh, I will change the text and to something meaningful and extrude it extrude and uh, and uh, there is an important step that we have to do in the program which is that currently if we check the vertices we see that for example the number 2 only have a few vertices on its bottom part and the particles wouldn't be emitted from this, uh, these uh, edges of the mesh so we have to increase the vertice number so there will be vertices in the middle points as well for example you can do this with this uh, subdivide property like now there are enough vertices everywhere uh, maybe one is too high and if we export it with the test exporter save it and open it and we have the tree shape here with a lot of uh, vertices we just copy the nitri shape into our particle file <coughs> I will delete this uh, former emitter mesh and paste the new one uh, maybe it is too big, I'm not sure, but we will change the target to it and save. Um, yeah, actually remove the gravity from it. So it is there. Maybe it's too small now so I can again easily increase its size mm, by 
transform and apply so we have this glowing number effect super nice and we can re-add the gravity wind So I have told you that you cannot apply a scaling uh, keyframe controller to the Nitri shape emitter because the game doesn't recognize it but there is a way to do a very similar thing and that is the geometry morpher controller which you can do in 3ds max or other program if you want to do it in 3ds max uh, you should check Mr. Urchin's tutorial videos because there are a lot of uh, 3ds max guide uh, material for example on the geometry morph controller as well so I will do the same that <coughs> he does in his videos uh, so I will create some cube and make a random uh, morphing animation with it. Uh, first we need to make as many copies of the original uh, mesh with the same amount of vertices, as many stages of morphing animation we want. But uh, from now on I will forget the narration as I'm not 100% sure what I'm doing. Um, So I have these three different stages of the same shape and hopefully if I apply Morpher to the original cube and pick the change the, the pick pick the morphed uh, versions of this mesh I will be able to morph the original cube into these like this So the animation will look like this and we can uh, export it uh, with uh, not the test exporter instead this netimmersion game brio exporter and what is important is that we do not give the extension here instead we remove it because otherwise the exporter won't work properly so we export the NIF with animation 
and check it in the meshes folder and as you see it is working nice uh, but we will delete the original meshes because we do not need them because only this shape has the morpher controller on it and we can apply this shape to the emitter node of the particles so we will copy it into the particle file and as we see it is quite small now but hopefully not too small because if it were too small then we would have to recreate the whole thing in 3ds max again because if we just apply the scale here and right click transform apply it wouldn't work because we need to scale the vertexes in neatly shaped data but they are now controlled by this Nigeon morph controller so uh, we cannot rescale this in scope and also in 3ds max if we would just uh, want to upscale this already morphed uh, mesh here when we exported it it would stay the original scale for some reason so we would have to recreate this thing but uh, now let's hope it will be <coughs> big enough so let's delete the old emitter and uh, enter the this morphed mesh for the particle emitter and I think I will change the particle size considerably and remove the particle growth fade and make the mesh invisible and remove the gravity as well maybe reduce the particle size even further and maybe it's easier to see what is going on uh, yes I should apply a um, the alpha property to the shape as well so it is invisible and reduce the particle lifetime even lower and increase the emit rate Well, this would have been cooler if this shape was bigger, but it's nice this way still. So you can do all kinds of things with this mesh as emitter and even with the Geomorph controller. Uh, you will find here another sample file I was just uh, practicing uh, 3ds max and made this mark which has two stages and morphing 
between these stages and I can use this as particle emitter and it can look cool as well Now comes the very last thing that I wanted to show, which is that you can use particles as emitters for a second set of particles. Uh, and to show it, I will use the this uh, particle grow fade sample file to start, and it will be easy to do and uh, similar to using a mesh for particle emitter so this is our starting effect and this is the emitter node for our particle which is now only one point which is the zero 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 point and this is our particle node here contained in this game setting node and in this particle we have the particle system controller where the emitter property points to this node and if we want a second set of particles which will use this first particle as emitter here is what we have to do. So first I will rename these nodes so it is clearer what is uh, happening. I will rename this uh, main emitter and rename this main particle. And we want a secondary particle which will use these particles as emitter so we do not need uh, to copy this uh, emitter node we will only copy this particle node under this uh, container node and rename it as secondary particle and we have to do the same steps as we did with uh, mesh as as when we use the mesh for particle emitter so first we have to convert the particle system controller of only the secondary particle so right click and convert to NBSP array controller and change the flag to 24 then change the emitter for the main particles because currently the emitter of the secondary particle is still this uh, only one point node so if we want to use the main particle as the emitter of the secondary particle we have to assign the node which contains the particle data and particle system controller so not this uh, NBS particle node instead this NB particles node so we have to type in 7 as the emitter for secondary particles and it is now complete so I have not saved uh, yet um, and currently the original effect looks like this and when I save you will see there are additional particles which are emitted as you see from the main particle 
but we have a problem here which we will fix as you see the secondary particles which are these are not emitted from the main particles instead they are most of the time emitted from the 0, 0, 0 uh, emit point uh, so here is uh, why it is happening actually it is uh, quite difficult to tell and it is important so I thought it is best if I just write down here and you can read it carefully and continue when you have understood this and I will show examples what I mean by this so the reason that these secondary particles are most of the time emitted from here is that because the main particles are not all emitted instead <coughs> there are some hidden in the emit point so we have to change some properties of the main particle node to fix the secondary particle um, first I will remove the gravity because it is unnecessary and change the lifetime a little and for example increase the emit rate to a high number and you can see now that if I use a really high number then all of the main particles will be emitted and there will be no excessive hidden particle remaining in the emit point so all the secondary particles can use the emitted main particles well actually I have told everything that is important here but I will just uh, play around with the values a little more for example I will reduce the particle number of the main particle to only like 7 um, and refresh it everywhere uh -huh. and change the direction a little and change the speed and check it out now uh, I I think I didn't spam the refresh button enough. Okay. I will move the whole thing above the ground a little and change the speed of the secondary particles a little and change the gravity to wind gravity and <coughs> uh, reduce the force and uh, change this rotation of the main particles so they start to move upwards and I think I will increase the spread of the 
first particle to a little more and I will increase the particle number of the secondary particle just for fun and decrease the size of the secondary particles and I can change the texture of the secondary particles as well for to this for example and I will change the texture of the first particle as well to something uh, green hopefully we have something and increase the size of the main particles too much Maybe we shouldn't have increased that. Mm. Um. Oh. Keep this alpha. Uh, I skipped this part and I just added some other textures and planar collider and color controller and there is this result and what I want to show here is that there are seven main particles uh, and now I used emit flag zero which means that particle will be particles will be emitted continuously based on the particle number but if I use emit flag one and emit rate a really high number particles mm, these seven main particles will be emitted at once and what I want to show is that as you see there is still one point where the secondary particles are emitted from and it is not a main particle and no matter how many main particles I have this will be here with these settings and well one way to fix it it's not really a fix but we can hide it by moving the particle node itself not the emitter of the main particle instead the particle node it's strange but it works like this so the main particles will be still emitted from the emit point but the particle node is moved up so this wrong uh, emit point is moved as well so if we move it below the ground we will not see this uh, maybe there is some other fix to this but uh, I have I don't have this problem if I use uh, this kind of effect as a spell effect but when I spawn this in the world I had this problem so you can move the particle node away and now it is not there and <coughs> you will only see the uh, particles you want Oh, 
know and uh, as I moved the particle node down the planar collider moved as well so I think I, sh I should uh, move it higher again uh. oh yeah the I forgot to edit the constant value okay now it's working properly and just uh, so you know you can add as many uh, particles as you want for example I will now add the third particle which will use the secondary particle as emitter uh, it's really easy to do now we have to assign the secondary particle as emitter and I will change the behavior of the third particle a little uh, I will change the colors of the third particles so you can see which it is uh, they will be green and yellow and uh, I remove this uh, starting random and check how it looks mm. maybe I will remove the speed and the gravity at uh, um, no I will keep a little gravity but remove the particle speed <coughs> well it's nothing cool but you know now that it works actually We are now completely done with the particle effects and this will be an extra chapter about planes because I think they are important as well. So in this uh, starting example file we have two planes. You can easily make them in 3ds Max or Blender and one of them is two-sided and one of them is only one-sided and uh, for example it is because the two-sided one has eight vertices and the one-sided has only four vertices and I have put them in these container nodes and I will show some uh, stuff uh, what I usually use planes for so planes need the same properties that we used on particles and these three are alpha property, texturing property and knee material property so I will add these to the second two-sided plane by right clicking on it and node attach property alpha property then texturing property and material property and at first it is invisible because in material property you have to uh, change the alpha value to 1 so it's fully visible 
and uh, the basic alpha flag some way is this but the 13 flag is the one that uh, I use most and I will add a um, base texture for this plane these settings are not important this uh, clamp mode is the same as with texture effect so if the texture is repeated or only put there once so I will add the base texture which uh, is the only texture that you will need most of the time uh, I will use some random texture for example this and we have our plane working and, uh, and as you see our plane now is transparent a little and it is only because of this alpha flag because no matter what texture you use the it will be always transparent if you do not want it to be transparent then you usually use this alpha flag so these are the two important alpha flags first but I will uh, keep on using this uh, alpha 13 uh, now let's say I will need uh, multiple copies of this plane so I paste two more here and move them, uh, move them away a little and I realized that I actually need uh, this plane in red, red color so I change some colors in the material property and then I realized that I have to do the same change all over in these copied planes but I do not have to do the same change over and over again in all these copied planes, instead what I can do is uh, change the properties of these copied uh, planes to the same as the first so how I do it is I see that the first plane has alpha property node nine numbered 9 and number 6 material property and number 7 texturing property so I, I will uh, modify the properties of these copied planes to the same as the first so 6, 7 and 9 I click on these other planes and in their property I just uh, retype the property numbers to 6, 7 and 9 and same here 6, 7 and 9 and uh, these planes formerly had different properties and they will be put here uh, under everything unused so I can just delete them so if I change the material color black to white then all will change at once so it is easier to edit but what is even easier if you do not put these properties directly onto the these meshes instead you can put the properties onto the container node of the shapes and if the container node has these properties then it will apply to its children in this case these meshes so I have made this 
container node called properties and I will put this texturing alpha and material property onto this node so I have to add three properties so I change the number of properties to three refresh and type those node numbers and now I can delete the property from the actual sh uh, planes because they are not needed there now so I just uh, refresh the number of properties to zero and they will disappear and as you see actually this one-sided plane got these properties as well but we will not use this plane I just showed here for an example so I will delete this and so as you see this properties node has three properties and it is applied to the shapes under it and uh, again if I change it, it the change will be applied to all of these there's a thing called animated textures which is that you can apply multiple frames of different textures to the same mesh and with the controller you can set the timing between each frame so to do this it is really easy just click on the texturing property and add the Niflip controller and you set the same flags as with other controllers so 8 for cycle and uh, to edit the flip controller you actually do not uh, change the values here instead you right click the flip controller and texture edit flip controller and here you can add the texture frames in this case I will add uh, some water texture to this these planes and uh, they are in TGA format for some reason but it doesn't make any difference so if you have added the textures you can set the stop time for the animation so that uh, between the start and stop time all these frames will be uh, shuffled or cycled and for example uh, I will change the mat material property back to white uh, now the animation is quite laggy because I have uh, set a uh, too big stop time and you see this delta is in seconds so it is 10 roughly 10 frames per second as if you divide the 4 seconds by this 32 frame the delta time between the frames is this much in seconds and if you want to make this faster than right click again and just reduce the time so it automatically changes those values and if we save it it will not appear in game at first we will see the original texture that is in the texturing properties base texture but this is not the reason why it is not playing 
it is not playing because the main node or containing node needs to be a an EBS animation node so the game can understand that this should be some animation so we will convert the main node in an EBS animation node it should work with a lot of flags I will use this uh, this flag and it will now work in game as well and um, it is recommended that you do not leave the base texture uh, as with the old texture if you are using a any flip controller because uh, as you see the texturing property has different slots for different kinds of texture you can apply to the mesh and in this case our Niflip controller modifies the texture of texture slot of base map which we shouldn't give a different texture than if we are using a Niflip controller so what we should do is that uh, either we remove the has base texture in the texturing property or it doesn't hurt as well if we as you see the base texture has a node number target this source texture but if we expand the niflip controller we see that it also has different uh, textures with different node numbers so the first texture of the Niflip controller is this numbered 7 so we can change the base texture of the knit texturing property to the same as the first of the Niflip controller so in this case 7 and now it is the same texture this maybe can fix some problems where the texture will would appear completely white at the start of the animation and if you want to change the size of the texture without changing the size of the plane you can edit the UV maps of the shapes as well in NIFScope easily for example I want that the texture on the middle plane is shrinked to half size so if I want to do that right click on the shape and select texture edit UV and now we see this green uh, lines is actually the size of our plane and if we increase the size of our plane then it will decrease the size of the texture of, on the plane so if you want to make the texture appear half as big you have to make the plane twice as big here so right right click the uh, all of the vertices and edges and and right click scale and translate selected and you can translate or scale the texture even rotate it and sorry I, you can't rotate but you can scale and for example if I make it uh, twice as big you see the water texture is twice as dense as on the as it is on the other planes and for example if I change the wrap wrap to clamp clamp it will be it will change that the texture is not repeated instead it is like this because 
it, it uh, shows the texture only once and it looks like uh, this on the outer parts because it will repeat the last pixels of the texture infinitely so you should have black uh, pixels on the edge of the texture if you want to use clamping mode but we will use wrapping mode mm. now I want to show you the use of another texture slot which is the dark texture and the best use for this is when you want to make some parts of your texture to disappear without actually modifying the texture in for example Photoshop and uh, so you can make parts of your texture disappear uh, just by adding this dark texture in NIF scope so we will add the dark texture to this and you will see what it does and we select knee source texture and another empty texture slot appears here and we can find the file that we want uh, it will be down here and this is what is happening as you see for example it is mostly visible on these uh, original planes as you see only the middle of the animated texture is showing up and the outer parts are disappearing and with uh, the wrapping mode it looks like this now but we can change the clamp mode uh, independent from each other in the different texture slots so if we change the clamp mode in the dark texture to clamp it will be still wrapping in wrapping mode in the base texture but it will be clamping in the dark texture and the result is that you see this middle plane has the same flipping texture and same dark map mat but uh, <coughs> it is two times denser actually now I will show you what this dark map texture is actually uh, I have opened it up in Photoshop so the most important thing is that the texture has RGB and alpha channels and on the RGB channels you should make everything completely black which you which uh, parts you want to disappear uh, uh, which you want to hide and the alpha channel can be completely white or the same as the RGB channels and this is important because uh, I will save it now so it appears in game as well it is important because multiple players use different uh, graphics graphic settings and the per pixel lightning mode uh, will not show the dark map properly if it is not the s uh, settings that I use here so you should always use a dark map like this only make the parts that you want to keep white and which you want to hide make it black for example I will make some something different uh, for example a line instead of a circle 
and this fill layer is usually the easiest to do such a thing Okay, so it's um, nice and completely white in the middle. Okay, and we can actually copy this to the alpha channel as well. it here <coughs> and save save it as a DDS and change it here and it is like this now as you see And it is important that if you use this kind of dark map texture, it will only work with alpha flag 13. Because if you want to use this alpha flag to not make your meshes transparent, then you will not be able to use dark maps because this will happen in per pixel lightning mode it actually works with standard lightning in vanilla game but per pixel lightning mode cannot show this so either you can find a different alpha flag which is similar to this and it works with uh, dark map or you cannot use dark maps with this kind of alpha flag but I'm sure it's possible to make uh, an accept acceptable result and uh, one important thing quickly is that with particles this alpha value in the material property did not work but it works with meshes and what it does is that with zero it is invisible with one it is visible and you can apply a controller to this easily the alpha controller enter the values for example five seconds and add keys linear interpolation at the time values and it will now disappear at half of the animation smoothly works nice in game as well even with uh, dark maps now I will show you the use of a thing called billboard node and first I will delete uh, some of these shapes as I will only need one plane in the middle so if you use a billboard node instead of a knee node then meshes under the billboard node will be rotated based on the viewpoint of the character in game so it is ba basically a visual trick so that 
the shapes will always face the character uh, no matter from which direction they look at the mesh and to create the billboard node I will convert the container node of this plane into a billboard node first I will remove some unnecessary things like this uh, of a controller and I will quickly convert this back to any node and uh, apply uh, delete this and apply a um, nick collision uh, switch node because we want to move through the plane and not get stuck in it so apply this nick collision switch with flag 0 and check ha check out check it out how it looks normally uh, so this is our plane normally and if I change this back to a billboard node this is the result where you <coughs> change the center of view the billboard node is making the plane rotating and uh, there are different uh, versions of billboard node the only property that is important here is the flag here because it changes the behavior there are four types you can try them out what they do the ri rigid face camera is the most useful one because it will nicely make the plane always uh, center the character it's uh, working like a particle basically uh, if I change the dark map back to the uh, round one then you can see it is uh, not noticeable that it is rotating it instead it looks like a sphere so the billboard node is <coughs> mostly good if you use uh, texture with which are uh, spherically symmetric or round textures uh, not sure what the phrase is for these but you get it now I will show you what the problem is most of the time with billboard nodes if you use a mesh which is a single plane and the problem is that if your plane is crossing other meshes for example if I move into this plane with the correct character you can see the boundary of the plane uh, it is very much visible and annoying for example if I increase the size of this plane it will cross the ground and the edge is showing and it is really annoying so I will show you the solution to fix this issue what we will do is create multiple copies of this plane and rotate them around the same center so it will be not a single plane in in the in the end instead it will be more like a 3d object and when it is near an, another mesh the intersection of the two meshes won't be as visible as if you use only a single plane 
Uh, so first I will disable the billboard node and create multiple copies of this mesh and yes as you see if you copy the plane uh, onwards itself it will actually make it brighter and it is a great workaround if you cannot use any light nodes and your texture is hardly visible you can create uh, you can copy the planes onto each other and it will be very very visible without any light but we will not need this trick instead what we will do is rotate this plane by 90 degrees on the y-axis and rotate the other plane by 90 degrees on the x-axis and you see this now you see there is some rendering issue with these planes and this is because we have not yet added the Z buffer property which only purpose is to fix cases like this so we will add a fourth property after the material and texturing and alpha property so right click and attach property Z buffer property and most of the time you will need flag 1 and now it is fixed and you see I wanted this result because if I save now uh, you see there are uh, three planes that are intersecting the ground and if we make more copies of these planes and rotate them around again and decrease the overall visibility the result effect will be what we need so let's keep on doing this so we could go on keep on copying planes one by one but Nifscope has a nice feature where you can combine shapes under the same parent node if they have similar properties and to do that you have to right click on the parent node of the meshes and optimize and combine shapes and again it only works if your meshes have the same texture and uh, properties so we have three planes and the, the result will be a mesh like this and now we can copy uh, it easier and also this combined meshes is also uh, useful sometimes because the rendering engine can sometimes understand these combined meshes easier and you will not have uh, flickering rendering issues so let's copy these planes again three times and uh, rotate them again and this by a different axis and combine them and as you see we get now uh, quite a lot of planes maybe this is already enough so currently it is too bright because the textures are overlapping each other and the result is too bright but so we have to decrease the uh, 
brightness of the effect uh, considerably like as you see it looks almost like the original uh, plane the same brightness but it is a 3D object and if we check it in game you see you can hardly notice the intersection with the ground but if I increase the brightness back again it is still there actually so maybe we could uh, create more and more planes uh, so I will make another round of these is enough now it's a pretty lot of shapes and it decrease the opacity again So as you see I walked in with my character and then and I cannot uh, notice any bound plane bo boundary or edge and also I cannot notice any edges near the ground even if I increase the <coughs> visibility so it's pretty useful it's like a particle effect but with planes and it is much less uh, laggy and it will not cause any FPS drop because it has less vertices than usual meshes in the game maybe it's a challenge for the graphics uh, engine but I have never in uh, observed any problems with these meshes so it's a nice alternative to particles and what is also nice is that uh, you can stretch these kinds of meshes easily as well uh, for example if I do not want a spherical mesh like this I, I can right click on the mesh and transform and scale vertices and if I want this sphere to stretch by three times on the z-axis I can just type it there and this is the result And again it was made possible with the use of uh, dark texture without the dark texture it looks like this but even it works without dark texture if you have a texture for the base texture which is transparent on the outer edges and also it is important that even with these combined planes it is just as easy to 
edit the UV or change the textures for example you can get a lot of uh, fun effects just by switching the textures or switching the dark map or even applying a UV controller as you will see in some examples later so it's a nice uh, thing for example there are some effects in enhanced invisibility mode which use the same method as these are not particles instead only some planes with uh, animated texture and uh, keyframe controller and what uh, most of the movement is is actually a UV controller which I will show you how to use. Uh, first I will just copy this existing uh, UV controller to the mesh that we are editing currently so you can see how it looks on that and after that I will show you how to create a UV controller from scratch and what it does so I will just copy the mesh and paste it here and check the node number of the UV controller and uh, link it to our mesh and unlink it from the original mesh and delete the uh, mesh that we don't need so we have the UV controller on this white plane and as you see it is moving like the other effect uh, I will change the opacity a little and we can easily edit this uh, UV controller here with the keys As for example now it has a 16 seconds animation but I will change it to only a 5 second animation when refresh the target to the neat reshape and I will delete this keyframe controller we do not need that for now so we have a 5 second animation in the UV controller and I will want uh, only a few keys like uh, 5 and the animation is 5 seconds long so last key is at 5 and uh, I will change key each second and Uh, I will show what this UV controller does in a single plane but I'm just showing it is easy to edit so if I increase the value it will increase the movement of the UV uh, uh, I have fucked up the values uh, right okay so the textures are moving uh, pretty radically and it works nice in game as well Now I have restored the original plane and will quickly try to show how to apply a UV controller from scratch in NIF scope. So right click 
insert and knee UV controller and <coughs> we have to link it onto the mesh because if you click on this controller it is not in the list so we have to insert and link it from the outside then save first to because we do not see the target property which we now do and we have to link it back to the shape and use cycle flag one frequency and for example I will want a six seconds animation time no, 10 second animation time and I do not know what this unknown short is but we have to add the data the controller will use and refresh here and you can see here four UV groups and the first two groups are translation on the X and Y axis the third and fourth are scaling or stretching along X and Y axis so I will first make the texture move over time in X direction for example I will have six keys a linear key and our animation time is 10 seconds and uh, I will make that mm, this uh, texture will move halfway to the edge so the middle of this circle is at the edge of the plane so to do that I have to move by 1.5 so half unit because one unit is uh, the length of the texture uh, on that axis I will want to do this animation over like uh, I think two seconds and fill the rest of the keys with zeros and as you see it moves back and forth on one axis then I can do the same on the other axis as well linear key always and set the same keys uh, this will move after two seconds <coughs> and finish after 4 seconds and it will be like this then I can do the stretching part with the remaining keys here so at 6 keys again and it is now the stretch like infinite because the value is 0 so we have to refresh these to 1 and it will start stretching after 4 seconds and if we type here I will move to 5 seconds and if I type here 2 then it is shrinked by half and if I type in uh, 1.5 it is stretched so units uh, values below 1 are stretching and uh, values uh, above 1 are shrinking so Yes, and it looks like this. Then I will do the same for the last group, but there will be no, no 
surprises here. <coughs> it will start after uh, yeah, six seconds and end at eight seconds and at seven seconds it will uh, at seven seconds it will stretch on the opposite direction so we can start from the beginning All right. Now I will show another use of the planes and now as billboard nodes as uh, again these effects didn't require billboard nodes because if I have applied billboard nodes then they would look like this for example from every viewpoint and we couldn't uh, see different sides of it but the billboard node has a great use if for example I want to apply a glow on this weapon here so I will just copy this plane that I have made into the weapons file and it is here now mm. I will remove the translation and as you see it is showing up in game and we will not need actually the knee flip controller for now and I will change the dark map texture to the circular one and I will not need NBS animation node and collision switch because I will not use any animation here so I will just convert it back to a knee node because why not and I think we will not have any collision issues with these planes but I will keep it here now. Uh, first I will find some texture which is good for a red glow. Uh, uh, like this and I will decrease the size of this shape. Uh, by let's say I think this amount and uh, I will change the material property to make it a little more red uh, and I will transform the container node of this neat shape to a billboard node um, convert to a billboard node and change the flag of the billboard node to rigid face camera and save and as you see you can see a small red glow near the handle of the sword but we do not want there want it there so I me I will move this billboard plane higher I will need to figure out which direction yes this direction so the glow will start at the handle and I will want to 
the glow to appear along the uh, whole sword so I will need to make a lot of copies of this billboard node and not the I, I will not copy the plane and paste it under the same billboard node because then all these uh, planes will be rotating in a fucked up way so I only have to copy the whole billboard node and <coughs> paste a lot of copies of this and I will move this one a little uh, further create another copy mm. I will paste a lot of these now and start to move them I think only 25 30 35 and so on and I will reduce the size of these planes as we go forward and make some other copies again Well, I should have picked a long, a short sword instead of a long sword, uh, but I will do this. Okay, we have reached the end, and that was unnecessary, so as you see, <coughs> we have made a pretty nice glow, which looks nice from every direction, and it is much uh, uh, less leggy, and it is more predictable than if we did this with particles, because particles can do some strange uh, rendering errors or cause FPS drop so this looks nice in the end as well uh, actually we have forgot to add the Z buffer property somehow it has been removed uh, attach property Z buffer, okay. Because now it flickers, but now it will be okay. And maybe the planes are recognizable. You can see small squares, but you can easily do twice as much uh, planes with uh, half as much uh, distance between the billboards but I think it is a really cool effect you can use different textures or different colors 
uh, even animated textures or different alpha values all kinds of stuff uh, for example I want to make this brighter I can just copy the whole effect and paste it again it's twice as bright now <coughs> and I can copy it a few more times if I want a lightsaber oh yeah now it is working Yes, as you see, you can see the edges of the planes, but this is because I have not moved these copied nodes. For example, if I <coughs> move this one a little away, and this too, and same here. you will not see the edges possibly well if you see it then you can always use those uh, rotated planes so the planes are not intersecting the mesh with the parallel lines instead if the plane is rotated then the combination of these intersecting edges will not be as visible but it is only visible now because we have created a hundred of these planes so if I only use one, it is okay. In this next example, I will show how to edit the UV of the different texture slots independently. So you can translate or stretch the dark texture while not changing the base texture and we will need the UV sets for that I will change the textures first so you can see easier what is going on so the base texture will be this inscription and the dark map will be a narrow line so only a <coughs> line of these inscriptions will show uh, so the plane looks like this without the dark texture and if I reapply the dark map we only see the middle text so Let's say I want to move up this dark texture so only the uh, first line of inscription is showing and I do not want to create another dark texture and to do that I should move the UV uh, upwards a little so let's try that edit UV and if we right click we can see we could select the texture slot but it is not working and if I select scale and translate selected and move uh, the UV upwards a little what happens is that not only the dark texture moved instead the base texture moved as well 
as if I disable it you see that the whole thing is moving and to move the UV of uh, different texture slots independent of each other you have to create new UV sets uh, you will need as many UV sets as many texture slots you are using up uh, but first I will uh, move the UV back to the middle because it is now translated and I will remove the Niflip controller for the water texture because we do not need that now so now I will add an additional UV set to the mesh that we have here as you see in the mesh's uh, uh, shape data we can see number of UV sets is currently 1 and the in the texturing property you can see that the base texture is using, using UV set 0 and the dark texture is using the same UV set so we need to create an additional UV set and to do that type 2 here and refresh and we will have two sets of UV uh, we have to refresh these things a lot of times and so this was the first UV uh, and this is the second uh, UV set which is now not working because it only contains um, zero values and the texture wouldn't apply to the faces of the mesh uh, properly like in the first UV set so I will copy the values of the first UV set to the second so they will be identical but we can edit them independently later so to copy the whole UV set uh, left click on the UV set and press ctrl C a couple of times and click on the second UV set and press ctrl V and the values will be there uh, if you right click it you, you will not see a copy of option so but luckily you can just ctrl C and ctrl V and uh, now that we have our two different UV sets we have to change the UV set the texture slots are using so I will change the UV set of the dark texture to 1 and now it will use the second UV set so for example I will now make the dark map line narrower without affecting the base texture and to do that I right click on the mesh and edit UV and if you right click and uh, move the mouse over the select coordinate set you can see that you can select now the UV set which you want to edit and our dark map is using the UV set numbered 1 so we change it to that and it is set to that and uh, we still cannot select the texture slot it is not working but if I now uh, scale this uh, down sorry up you can see that the dark map is getting narrower without affecting the base texture so it works like this and if you check the UV sets data again 
you will see that the values are different now for example the second values are different because we stretched the texture on the y-axis now next I will want to create an animation where this dark map line is moving up and down and showing different parts of the inscription texture and to do that I will need an EUV controller so let's add it and um, link it to the Nitri shape and add the usual properties I will have a 10 seconds animation and save to link the mesh then add the UV data so as we want to move the dark map on the y-axis we have to change the second UV groups which is good for y-axis translation and uh, I will need three keys a linear key and uh, hopefully it will move the dark map but as you see now the UV controller is not moving the dark map instead it moves the base texture for example if I disable the dark texture you see that it is only moving the uh, base texture but we need the UV controller to move the dark texture so how do we change that well the UV controller always applies to the first UV set and now the base texture is using that first UV set and the dark texture is using the second so we have to flip that so I will change that the base texture is using the second UV set and dark texture is using the first and now it will move the dark texture instead of the base texture but before we have stretched the dark map texture uh, and now that stretching is applied to the base texture so we should uh, uh, stretch this back so right click on the Nitri shape edit UV and select the uh, second UV slot and scale it back I think this will be good yes and I will now stretch or shrink the dark texture again so it is a uh, narrower uh, reapply the dark texture and now you see it is working like this maybe I should uh, speed up the UV controller and change the keys because it should move start from the uh, one edge of the plane and end at the opposite edge of the plane like this 
and it works nice in game as well. <coughs> well, it is not. Well, it sucks because, as it turns out, it works in new scope as I wanted. So only the dark dark map is moving by the UV controller, but in game actually the UV controller is moving both the dark texture and base texture for some reason, so we cannot use the UV controller this way as it only works properly if it moves the base texture, so I will flip back the UV set numbers and now it works, but uh, now the <coughs> base texture is moving and not the dark map so it's a uh, little harder to make uh, the thing that you want with uh, these settings but there are always some workaround workarounds like uh, you can apply a keyframe controller quick to the uh, after the UV controller uh, insert keyframe controller and link it after the the UV controller and save So what I will do is I will move the plane itself uh, next to the UV controller so it will look like the actually the dark map is moving because I will apply a translation in the Y direction uh, as our plane is, I think, 100 units in dimensions, <coughs> so I will need to translate it by 100 units. Uh, in, in the Y direction. Actually, I should flip these keys because we set these translations in the opposite direction than what we wanted. So now <coughs> the plane is moving with the base texture, so it looks like the dark map is moving, but actually, the dark map is the stationary one, and now it will work nice in game we can make it a little brighter if we copy uh, create copies of it Uh, use for this uh, example, for example, is this unique spellbreaker shield where the inscriptions are glowing and moving, and here also the base map is animated by the UV controller, and the dark map is the stationary one.
and uh, you can not only use uh, simple dark maps like now I use the uh, line or a stripe you can use all kinds of dark maps for different effects okay now we are done with everything I will show some files which you will find in the downloaded pack in the other folder these will be just some example effects for example this glow aura mesh is only that uh, rotated plane uh, mesh and it is an example that you can create multiple copies of it in different size and rotation and it uh, <coughs> looks like a nice light effect in game and you can change the brightness of it really easy by changing the alpha value so it will be hardly visible now oops uh, I saved the wrong file so it is hardly visible now and you can attach this to uh, torch lights or lamp effects or whatever you want and there is this portal UV folder which will contain these uh, special meshes which has this animation which is only made by a UV contro controller as this mesh has an interesting UV map uh, Red Flurry Demon and Melchior Dark help to make this so now it has a dark texture but if I disable it and disable the detail texture you see how the texture is moving and it only needs a UV controller in one direction but instead the as usual mesh is only moving in the Y direction this moves in every direction somehow so basically no matter what kind of texture you put on this it will look pretty nice and it gets interesting when you take this plane and create multiple copies of this and rotate them around with uh, like we did th with the planes so I made some examples here what kind of effects you can do like it has maybe eight uh, copies of this uh, special plane and you can get this these kinds of uh, 3d animated magical objects which work nice in game as well and there are some others only with different textures for example this is nice for a portal effect mm. uh, for example if I want to make it look like a portal I can easily stretch it on the z-axis a little and I can increase the frequency of the UV controller well let's not do that but you can increase the keys here easily
and there is a third example Uh, for example, there are uh, these uh, dark map textures that I have made quickly just to demonstrate that no matter what kind of textures you use, it will look nice. I have changed the dark texture and it looks cool again. Same with this kind of dark map. And I can change the main texture to, for example, this one, and change the detail texture to maybe this. Well, I could play this with this for a long time, but <coughs> you see, you can have all kinds of results. Uh, and lastly, among the sample files, you will find this file folder, and here I have put some uh, example files. I wanted to show what kind of fire effects you can make with uh, particles. The first is this brazier. Uh, and here I have tried to put uh, as many details as possible. For example, it has a uh, smoke at the top and small particles, and the flame has uh, an interesting texture. And I have made it by applying a dark texture to the flame particle, and I have done it in an interesting way because. I have moved the uh, parts of the particle away so, so you can see how it is made up. So I have applied, I, I have made two copies of the same fire particle which looks like this without the dark texture. Um, one second. So the fire particle looks like this without the dark texture, but I have applied this kind of dark texture to the particle and I have flipped the dark map over and applied to the other copy of the same particle. So, I have like this mirrored uh, version of the same flame, and if I uh, combine them, move them back to the same point, the result is this. Uh, well, it looks different in per pixel lightning and uh, standard lightning mode, both is good, the per pixel lightning is a little brighter as you see. And I have applied a little glow around the flame as well. If I move it you will see what I mean. Uh, 
and this is it. I have used a very uh, hard to see texture with uh, almost uh, black colors and it is really nice if you uh, combine them. It even makes them more realistic. And if I move back you will see The next one is this torch which looks uh, fucked up in Nivsco but it looks nice in game even in per pixel lightning mode and even in uh, standard lightning mode as you see and what is uh, important about it is that I have applied uh, trailing particles on it to make it as realistic as possible as you see small particles and the smoke is left behind as you move even the fire itself it was quite tricky to make but I think it works nice and it doesn't need uh, much more particles than the vanilla uh, torch effect uh, and uh, Sometimes when you mm, change area, it became becomes invisible, but it's fixable, I'm sure. So it's like this. And uh, next thing that I wanted to show is this flame sword. Uh, I will need a light for that. So I have applied the same <coughs> trailing particles on this Daedric sword and it, it uh, makes uh, quite realistic flame. I think this is all I wanted to show so thanks for watching and I hope you will make some nice stuff goodbye